temporarily pinch him. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the July 11th meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. The meeting will now come to order. May we have a roll call, Madam Secretary? Miss um, Roby. Miss McLean. Here. Mr. Jones. <coughs> Mr. Harrington. Here. Ms. Himes. Here. And Ms. Cunningham. Here. We have a quorum. All right, we have a quorum. A motion to excuse Ms. Roby. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, motion. Ms. Himes, second. Ms. McLean, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Uh, Mr. Jones has resigned. So we don't need to do anything with that. All right. Uh, did everybody have a chance to review the minutes? Any additions or corrections? I have a couple small ones. Okay. I did not call the meeting. He said vice chairman called. Oh, yeah. There was no. You got on. Yeah, okay. The there you go. Okay, I did not um, call the meeting. Okay, that's true. I didn't and uh, also, you stated that she stated there was own corrections. Should have been no corrections. Gotcha. Okay. I will fix that. Okay. Anything else? Um, we need a motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Motion, Mr. Second. Harrington. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Does anyone need to disclose any ex parte communication? Do we have any announcements, Madam Secretary? Yes, ma'am, we do. Okay. Uh, case number nine. 06-19-119 at 214 Boylston Avenue is in compliance 7-1-2019. Case number 11, CEB 05-19-84 at 404 Wilson Avenue is in compliance 7-10-2019. Case number 17. 04 19 74 at 307 Adeline Street is in compliance 6 28 2019. Case number 26 07 19 122 at 341 Plaza Boulevard is in compliance 7 8 2019. Case number 27 CEB 07-19-123 at 321 Flushing Avenue is in compliance 7-8-2019. Case number 29, CEB 07-19-150 at 111 Bellevue Avenue is in compliance 7-11-2019. Case number 38, CEB 07-19-143 at 472 Zelda Boulevard is in compliance 7-10-2019. Case number 40, CEB 07-19-127 at 1409 Peachtree Road is in compliance 7-9-2019. Case number 43, CEB 07-19-144 at 209 Zelda Boulevard is in compliance 7-10-2019. Case number 50, CEB 07-19-142 at 752 Derbyshire Road is in compliance 7-10-2019. Case number 51, CEB 07-19-146 at 480 Zelda Boulevard is in compliance 7-10-2019. Okay, no, nobody from the audience is one of those cases, right? Sometimes people don't realize they're, they don't have to come if they're in compliance. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's 
Let me have the code officers come forward, please, and be sworn in. <coughs> I solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, here's our procedure, everyone. We'll be calling cases by number, and for the most part, is the, in order as they are listed on the agenda. Uh, if there are any attorneys that must be present in court, we'll hear those cases first. If there are any police officers who must get back to assignments, we'll hear those cases first. When your case is called, please come forward, be sworn in. State your name and address for the record. If you're not the owner of the property, please state your relationship to the owner. Our proceedings are recorded, so please speak into the mic. The board will hear from the code officers first, and then you'll be given the opportunity to respond. Please direct all responses to the board. Okay, we're going to start with our lien reviews, and we're going to do lien review number one, CEB 0406-83. Madam Chairman, remember that the, we have only four members here today. Lien reviews require four members to be in, voting in the affirmative. So the lien reviews will only be adopted or passed with four affirmative votes. Okay. State your name and address, please. Carol Sykes, 13327 Lake George Place, Tampa, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And how, what is your relationship? I'm the great granddaughter of the property, um, the list of property owners. Property uh, has been leveled, is that correct? It has been since 2007. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gross. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ben Gross, uh, City Attorney's Office. I am, at least for part of this meeting, uh, pinch hitting for Assistant City Attorney Jackson, who will be here. Uh, this uh, property came into compliance in 2006. Part of the reason why the fine grew so large is the contractor didn't notify the city. Uh, another really complicating factor in this, in this case is that the, the original uh, owner passed away. Uh, the, the property was in a sort of... Uh, uh, non-final status in, in determining who was going to be the owner for quite a long time uh, and that uh, I'm not sure if that's been resolved yet but in any event uh, because uh, there was compliance and, and because the the fine ran uh, despite the property being in compliance for so long staff has no problem with with you know waiving the um, the lien and the fine altogether okay. Uh, and I have our code inspector here if you'd like to talk uh, both with him about it. Just the first case. I think both, it's uh, the same thing on both. Yeah, just, it is. Well, they're technically separate CEBs, but they, they related to the same transaction and, and same, same house. Now, who is supposed to notify? Uh, well, I mean, technically, it's the obligation of the party who's, who's uh, subject to the order to notify, but in this case, we had, and, and we're not quite sure about this at this point, either somebody who is ill or aged or, or maybe even passed away. And so in these circumstances, again, we're, you know, we're willing to uh, let this one go. Okay. Look through this paperwork. You need a college degree in anthropology to figure that out. And people have been deceased for years. And grandfathers, mothers, and, 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 uh, I, I tend to agree that we should just dismiss it. Yes. We need to, we need to, we need to. Well, let's, um, I mean, would you like yeah. to say something? You want to hear about it, but I... Uh. Um, yes, my, my great-grandparents have owned this property since the 1940s, and um, they have long passed away, and it went to my grandfather, um, their eldest son, and my grandfather um, passed away, and then it went to his brother, his wife, and then my grandmother, who have um, all passed away with the exception of one who lives on the West Coast, and her fam their family is not willing to participate. My mother and my aunt my and my dad have paid the taxes on the property since everyone has been deceased and have been caring for it since then. My 
my mother is very ill now who has been the responsibility so all of this is kind of now come to me and I want to um, get everything straightened out so that we can continue to keep the property and maintain it and oh, you're just have it the property the property mm -hmm. code is okay I, I'm sorry I didn't see that so um, mm -hmm. the property is being maintained okay um, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to waive the lien amount in its entirety. So, so moved. Move. Second. In which case or both cases? <clears throat> both cases. Let uh, in both it. cases. Case. Do so we need to... Both you can do it for both, Madam Chair, as far as city is concerned. Okay, let's do it for both. Case number is CEB 040683 and uh, CEB... 1205552 at 343 and 345 Division Street. So the motion was made by Ms. Himes and seconded by Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, so now we have one more lien review to do. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And this is CEB 0709133 at 322 Riva. Mm -hmm. Good morning. State your name and address, please. Um, Mira Lakic, address 61 South Turn Circle, Ponsonland, Florida, 32127. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, I did not get your name, sir. It's Miro Lakic, M-I-R-O. Okay, L-A-K-I-C. Okay, and um, you're the new, the new owner of the property. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right, Mr. Gross. Uh, ben Gross, City Attorney's Office. Uh, this uh, this consisted of some violations of the International Property Maintenance Code, including failure to repair windows, fences, paint, exterior trim walls, trims landscaping there were there were many violations and I imagine that when you first saw this case the property was pretty unsightly, unsightly. Uh, they did come into compliance uh, uh, on June 26 2019 uh, the the fine was running at $25 per day since February of 2010 which uh, gives us a current total of $15,000 uh, plus recording costs uh, staff is is willing to uh, accept a lien reduction there were some costs involved uh, in this with the city in this case and while we're aware that there's new ownership uh, staff uh, uh, believes that a fifteen hundred dollar amount would would reasonably represent uh, the city's time in this case what would you like to tell us um, I'd like to say that um, I've gotten the property into compliance I'm not the one who made the violations on the property um, it's been a lot of time there cleaned up the whole property. Um, I'm asking the board to give me leniency. And, um, you know, the best that I can, I've done everything that I'm supposed to. Um, we would have been, had it inspected earlier, but we didn't know about the lien. So this is how... The, this tends to happen a lot when people buy things at tax sales. They don't realize their liens on the property. Um, this is the first, that first one. This is the first one you ever bought? No, sir. Somewhere along the line, you didn't find out that there are potential liens? I mean, you said in, in, in this you knew there was a lien. No, he didn't know there was a lien until yeah. after he bought the property. I think that's what it said. <clears throat> um, how long have you been involved with this property? Um, I've owned... I'm not really sure on the public records, but it, it's on there when uh, when I got title, and you can see it's a tax deed. Do you have that information, June? Because I have I I have that question too. When did you purchase it? I don't want to give the wrong information. I know that's okay. The property rented out now, and it was here um, when. When they asked the question, do we have it rented out? No, we actually sold it on a contract for deed, so we never rented it. We actually sold it on a where they we paid us. We don't own the property anymore. Since we've owned, but we we did it on a contract for deed, where it stays in our name because right. they put very little down payment. All right. Here's the sale history. Wait okay, so you, so the tax deed was. Uh, 
I, okay, I, I'm not sure I understand the difference between a quick claim and a tax deed, but the tax deed sale was in 2012, and the quick claim was in 2014. We'll go by the 2012. Okay. Okay. Tax assessor's deed gave the property to him, but you have to go back later quiet title. That's what the quick claim is. Okay. Okay. I mean, after four years, you don't have to do a quiet title. Any other comments from the board? Anybody want to ask questions? And so from 2012 until now, there has been no renters in that house? It was on a contract for deed, not a rental. I'm sorry. It's actually a sale where you sell it to somebody, but with a low down payment, so you don't transfer title into public records because of foreclosure costs, you know, sometimes two, three thousand dollars to do. But as far as you know, there's not been a renters in that house since 2012? No, only on a contract for deed, which is a sale. The person that's doing the contract for deed is living in the house. Is that right? Or not? No. no? He's not living. So. We ended up kicking them out. So there's no one? Nobody in the house. The house is vacant. Okay. And how long it, has it been vacant? I'm not really sure, but it's public records when we did the eviction and kicked them out. Okay. But at one time, there was an AUKUS. It was on, a, on a contract yes. for deed, not on a rental. Mm -hmm. It's one page each month. Yeah. Right. Right. I get that. But they're not doing that. May, may I add something? Okay. And I don't think that's relevant, really, to what we're doing, is it? Okay. No. So let's... Well, you can certainly determine it's relevant, but ultimately, you know, regardless of the degree of culpability or responsibility, and, right. and it, it appears the gentleman saying he's been in ownership of the property since 2012, if right. you've sort of put that. But I will add. If, if, I'm sorry, if I can sorry. finish my thought, if you can put the contract for deed aside, the, the city's costs would pretty accurately be reflected by a $1,500 lien. Okay. I, I'd like to add that as soon as I got the property, it was within a few months in compliance. It's not like it's sat in non-compliance all this time. Immediately, we went and got it into compliance. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I'm sorry, can I, can I, okay. do you mind if I ask the gentleman a question? So, sir, you took, you took title by tax deed 2012. Yes. And then you quit claim deed 2014. I guess you're, it, the property came into compliance in, a month ago, less than a month ago, uh, two weeks ago. It was B. But you, so for, for what you're saying to be true, what you're saying is you didn't have possession of the property because you had given possession of the property over to somebody else through this contract for deed and didn't get it back until, until you kicked him out. Is that what you're saying? Because the, the, the title information that you're giving says you've, you've been in possession of the property for seven years. So uh, could you please clarify that? Okay, what I'm saying is I took title to the property via tax deed, and immediately after I got in the tax deed, the property was put into compliance. It was just never inspected, and we ended up selling the property to somebody else. But it was in compliance the whole time without an inspection from the city. Our, our code staff has no information that the property was in compliance uh, until, seven years ago right. until June 26th right. of this well, year. I, you know, I know that we generally say $1,500 is what, you know, to cover city costs, but in this particular case, I think I'd like to make $2,500. Do I have a motion? No moved. All right. Second. Okay. The chair will entertain. Uh, okay. A motion has been made by Mr. Harrington and second by Mrs. Himes to impose a lien of $2,500 subject to being paid within 30 days. It's actually reducing the lien amount. I agree. All in favor so, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. So, you see, Ms. Barnes, please. Thank thank you. I'd like to thank each member <coughs> of the board. Thank you. Let's get in. Okay, let me see our continued cases. All right, we're going to move on with our continued cases now. Uh, case number one, CB031947, Robert Sy. Mr. Sy present? 
No. Okay. We're here for con determination of compliance date. Tony? Uh, fortunately for you, I've got Mr. Jackson here, who's very prepared to discuss the case. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Well, you didn't miss much. <laughs> you <leave> you. <laughs> Did you bring any donuts? <laughs> on case one. Or right. on case one. If you're ready, I'm ready when you are. I'm sorry, is already called case? Yeah. Case. And we don't see Mr. Asai, so. We're here to determine uh, a compliance date. Yes. Uh, good morning, Anthony Jackson, attorney for the city of Daytona Beach. Um, this is the circumstance where we kind of was waiting on maybe a use determination or a status, a circumstance from the uh, review of the uh, uh, planning division. Uh, they completed that review and they're allowing the uh, property uh, in a manner which they they uh, had it as far as the uh, the number of units right. however uh, they did have other uh, matters they had to resolve as part of the uh, violation and so they needed additional time we're, well, we want to just now after having answered that question them into the next cutoff okay uh, yeah, I'm glad to see that that. Okay, I'm sorry. Clarification: It's amending to the September cutoff. It's September because there's still things we have to get done. The city has to get done to work with him. And That's get correct. It. Okay. All right. The chair will entertain a motion uh, to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until uh, August eighth to come into compliance or be returned to the board. Uh, mm, no, September. it would be September 4th. Oh, it would be September 4th. September cutoff. Okay, September cutoff. Isn't the September cut? Oh, that's nine. Ooh, wow, nine four. Okay. <laughs> nine four, got it. Uh, I got it. Be returned to the uh, board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such... A motion. So moved. Uh, second. Motion is time. Second, Ms. Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. <clears throat> like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number two. CB0918109. Trovengers. We're here for a uh, progress report determination of a compliance date. Morning, sir. State your name and address, please. Uh, Dennis Traubinger. Address is uh, 1212 Sunset Circle, Daytona Beach. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this is one we've been working on for a little while. Uh, in, in response to uh, accommodation requests, the, uh, we're at a point where we're uh, able to um, uh, move forward now and get, get this uh, case remedied. Great. Uh, we just need to know how much time they need. Uh, so uh, as far as the compliance state, we're not quite sure. What, uh, the inspector kind of wanted to hear from them on, on what, what's, what they're doing. Okay. Oh, my turn? Yeah, your turn. Um, Tell us what's going on. Yeah, well, Ms. Taylor uh, called me a couple weeks ago and told me to apply for a building permit. Okay. Okay, which I've done. I had to write a letter and, uh, explaining what, what we were going to do right. and all that. And I haven't heard back from them yet. Okay. Oh. Okay. Plague. Yes, ma'am. Officer, collect my credentials are on file. Um, what happened is on uh, the 28th of our uh, 21st of the month of June, the city's dropped its variance request. So what they did already, that you applied for a permit July 1st, and it's under review right now by the building department. So we're working with them to make sure it goes forward, but right now it's under review. Okay, so how long do we think that will take? 
Okay. I, I would think we would just need to continue to staff I, I, for yeah. next next month, and then we'll be able to. Still not having compliance day, but if we can about, continue it. Okay. How about nine four? Yes. I'm sorry. I have some information. Okay. Um, as you guys know, we we've been trying to streamline. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't see Scott Lee. <laughs> Um, we've been trying to streamline the process between L and P, so I have some information from L and P that okay. I'll provide on some cases. In this case, which is 1212 uh, Sunset, um, the, you, you, what they're waiting for you on is a supporting document uh, that supports the necessary need for the ADA accessibility. If you provide that document, I think that will speed the process up and be able to get the process completed for I you. I provided some more documentation <clears throat> yesterday. Okay. And uh, they said they would have to, it'd have to be reviewed and they'd get back to me. Okay, well this, this, this information I have is prior to yesterday, so you're good then, yeah. Yes. Okay, so we can set a compliance date and then... <coughs> well, that's the thing, we don't... Be, uh, what he's presented, now it's under review, we don't really know how much time. If you want to set one, you can, but um, we'd probably be equally effective, Madam Chair, if we were to uh, continue the status to next month. I mean, I, I believe that... Based, just based on the fact that they've been coming every month, that they'll, they'll be working towards getting it resolved. Right. Are we accomplishing the same thing? We could just set it for a compliance date? Need yes, more, we would. Need more time. Yeah. It, and, have it and that's back. true. We, we say, we, what happens is we go ahead and do a progress report, and they're done. We've got to come back the next month again to close it. So we <coughs> set a compliance date, maybe in September. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Buy any more time? Fine. And I'm fine with that. Although, Mr. Uh, Cena, if if indeed he comes to the compliance prior to the next month, we'll close it and not have to That's come fine. back. Right, and great. that would be fine. That would be great too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we need a motion to enter a compliance date of nine four, uh, twenty nineteen. Is there such a motion? So move. Motion, Mrs. Himes. There a second. Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. aye. I mean, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, thank you. So hopefully this is going to be the last time you'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you built the pyramids faster. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. Case number three, CB0619103, Grace Pedersen. Respondent President, no? Okay. Uh, now, I know last time she came to the special magistrate meeting and she was supposed to come to this meeting. So we'll have to figure out what's going on with this meeting. Okay, Madam Chair, they, they had an inspection that was done on uh, the 29th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, that inspection uh, failed, but there were minor repairs that needed to be done. The, the, uh, Mr. Jones is the inspector in this case, and he's just recommending that we amend to the next cut off so that he can take care of those minor things and, and be in compliance. Okay. I tend to Mr. Jones if you have okay, any facts. Mr. Factual. Jones, what is it they have left to do? Uh, Mark Jones, City of Daytona Beach. Uh, my credentials are on file. Just some minor issues. They had a couple unlicensed vehicles, uh, a couple windows that would not operate. Uh, one had a broken pane that was not anything of any major issue. I have been in contact with the owner, uh, and I'm sure the reason they're not here is because we did do the inspection, okay. and I informed them I was going to request uh, right. the next. If they have all these violations, why isn't there, why isn't that on the agenda, not the failure to have the, the license? Well, because that's why they didn't get the license, correct? That is correct. Well, it, find them in non-compliance on all those things? <laughs> I'm sorry, I can answer that question, I think. It, so the rental process is a little bit different. There is a checklist of things they have to comply with. When they write their case up, it is for failure to obtain the rental license. They do have to comply with that entire list. If they go through that process, there's really no reason to cite them for all those issues. If they at some point stall and refuse to continue through the process, then we could go back and cite them under uh, the code violations for those issues if necessary. I'd like to see that happen a little sooner okay. than, than six months of okay. dealing with these inspections. And, and it seems willful to me after after the third or fourth month coming here. We'll have to, we'll have to address that on a case-by-case -case basis. We'll look at seeing if the timetable is too long on some of them. 
Okay. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 731 2019 to come into compliance and be returned to a meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Mr. Harrington. Second, Mrs. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign <coughs> closed. Case number four, CEB 0619 102, Holly Hoffman. No show. Okay. Didn't show up before either. We have two cases, don't we? The next case is the same. Yeah. Uh, is it the same? But it's not the same address. Same, different address. Yeah, we'll do them separately, but we can do them quickly. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, the inspector in these cases, in case number four is Mark Jones, as well as in case number five. Uh, Mr. Jones has had communication with the respondent. She is out of state. Uh, they are, they have, are um, inspections, and he's asking to amend to the next cutoff. So, Mr. Jones, they, they have contacted you to get an inspection? Yes, correct. The owner is out of state. Uh, I've had the tenants have contacted me. We're coordinating uh, doing the inspections. Uh, just had a lot of problems getting a hold of the owner. Uh, she's very difficult to reach on the phone. And when we finally did get together, we got it set up with the tenants to do, schedule the inspections. They aren't scheduled yet. Uh, I'm hoping to have them scheduled and get them completed. Good this month okay all right any questions from the board chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 731 2019 to come into compliance to be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to a thousand dollars per day is there such a motion so moved motion mr harrington is there a second Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. <coughs> Case number five. CEB 0619-117. Same, same issues? Yes, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, same issues. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 7... 3129 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So move. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Case number six, CEB 0419 76. Paul Joukowsky. Doesn't look like he's here. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Uh, you may recall this is uh, the guy who had been uh, working on getting some windows was the only thing he had left. He needed the windows installed. <coughs> um, the, he ended up having the wrong size ordered. Uh, they have been reordered. Um, we are asking to amend to the September cutoff. That's kind of been a process we've been dealing with with a number of the uh, property owners as far as window situations that has been taking a little bit of time. I, I tender uh, okay. the inspector, All right. uh, um, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, <coughs> this is just one window? It's yes, it's a kitchen window. It's not even a, a bedroom window, which we would conceive yeah, as a life safety. Been, he was notified in 2019, 2-8-2019, that he needed to get this uh, rental license. Correct. And I, I don't understand why it's taken all this time to get one window. Does he have the window? No, what had happened was, uh, in regards to the window, he's corrected all the other minor violations that he had, with the exception we inspected it on April 17th is when he failed. <coughs> he ordered the window from Daytona Window. I even talked to, the, to them. They contacted me. Oh, okay. And they ordered the, they ordered the wrong size. Oh. They went to install it. Uh, it was supposed to be installed two weeks ago. I have since now talked to the new contractor that has been hired to order the window. And he's telling me it'll be four to six weeks by the time it comes in, and he has it installed. 
Okay. I mean, we don't have any control over that. And the owner is out of town. Yeah. Uh, he had to go back for medical reasons. That's uh, He has been here at uh, the other meetings. Everything's done except this one window. That is correct. Um, <coughs> so we'll amend to four to six weeks. I can't remember. It's just mind-boggling to me, but okay. Uh, so is it the contractor or is it the window people are waiting on? We're waiting now on a new window order. The Daytona window would not, they came out and measured and ordered it. When it came in, it came in incorrectly. So the owner decided he was going to go with someone else besides Daytona window. Because okay, and there, so would they be considered the contractor or does he then have something, does he have to go get a contractor? Yes, he must have a contractor who should have, I uh, did not check this morning, but the permit sh should be uh, applied for. If not today, it'll be applied for this week because okay. I talked with the contractor yesterday. So does, do we need to have one or two months for this? I mean, four weeks is not July 31st. Uh, so. Well, he's saying four to six weeks for yeah. the winter to come in. Oh, God. That so seems to be the norm uh, when, we're, when uh, these owners are ordering windows. <coughs> okay. Because last time he was here, he had showed us the order, so. Yeah, okay, so do we want to give them till September 4th? Yeah. Does that? Yeah. All right. Carol, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance by respondent until September 4th, 2019 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign a poll. <coughs> motion carries. Case number seven, CEB 0619-115. Christine Ziegler from West Palm Beach. Not here. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Tom Clegg. Mr. Clegg reports he's had no contact with the owner. Uh, we've done all of the proper notifications and uh, there hasn't been any contact. This uh, he's recommending a $200 per day fine to $15,000 for the maximum of $15,000. Any questions? Did you say $200 or $250? $200. Mm. Um, I'd like to see it a little more. I'd like to see it at $250. Because we've had no response, no anything, look at it. I mean, there's your answer. We need to get some movement on this. Anybody have? Uh, all right, so the chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $250 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum $15,000. Is there such a motion? So no. moved. <coughs> Okay, uh, that was the motion, Ms. McLean. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number eight, CEB 0619-106. Elmer and Sarah Flannery. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address, please. Christy Bechet. 15544 Firelight Drive. Winter Garden, Florida, 34787. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. <sighs> Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for um, imposition of a fine. The inspector is Tom Clegg. Uh, Mr. Clegg reports that the property remains in noncompliance. He's asking for a $100 day fine to a maximum of $10,000. Uh, I'll I attend to Mr. Clegg uh, if you have any factual questions. When did you check the property? Wait, just one second. Look, uh, Mr. Clegg, do you have anything to add right now? Uh, no, ma'am. I, I did do a reinspection last week. These are. You what? I did a reinspection last week also. And it's the, these are. Yeah, there's it's, it's, it's some improvement, but not total. Okay. All right. What would you like to tell us? It's your turn. Um, the RV is gone since then, and all of the front area is definitely picked up and cleaned. That red trailer is no longer there. 
Um, that white thing isn't there either. So it's been picked up since last week. Did you call to have Mr. Klieg come and inspect that? I'm not sure if they called or not. My okay. mom was supposed to take my mother. She and may have that not. Would be, uh, Sarah? Yes. Well, the last time. Mr. Klieg. Oh, okay. I was going to say I had no contact. I know they were having an issue with her, with your brother, brother. Mm -hmm. and they were supposed to do some court order or something. And I never, that's the last I heard that they were in her family squabbling. So yeah, it's my brother that lives there. Right, the you said he was a hoarder or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, we didn't do no eviction or nothing, but we made him clean it up. Like I said, I haven't heard anything since I last last hearing from you. Oh, okay. Yeah, my mom was supposed to have called, and I guess she didn't. Okay, because it was going to, last time everybody was here uh, in June, they said they were going to get it cleaned up right away. Right. And you were notified in March, or your mom was notified in March, mm -hmm. to get cleaned up. Right. So that's, you know, that's an awful lot So how lot fast can we do a reinspection? Because it's pretty much done. <clears throat> what isn't done? I'm sorry? What isn't done? Um, this morning when I went by, there was three trash cans in front of the um, garage that I seen, and then there is one um, piece of six-foot privacy fence on the other side of the house. There. That's, but that white thing is gone, so it's just that six-foot privacy fence there. So are you and whoever going to do this yourselves, or are you somebody else supposed to do it? Oh, I can do it when I go home. It's five minutes. It's three trash cans and a piece of wood. The inspector can be inspected. Well, if indeed that's what we're doing, we'd like to do it because she's completed everything and in compliance. Um, um, you know, she had said she's close to being in compliance. How fast can you get out there? We'd like to get out there when it's done. So if she can get it done, uh, we're willing to ask the, the men so that we can go and verify it it's, if they're that close, if indeed they're that close. How does everybody feel about that? <coughs> Is that all right? It's, it's all right for this time. Mm -hmm. Probably won't be all right next time. Okay. So you know. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. It's hard. I live in Winter Garden, so. Yeah, I know, but it's been but. since March. When, okay. When the property was noticed. So that's a long time to just clean up a few things in a yard. Right. Okay. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 731-2019 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Mrs. Heim. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like, sign, opposed. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. <coughs> Case number nine is in compliance. Case number 10, CEB 0519-95, Jerlene Stiggins. All right. She was here last time, but not this time. Okay. Oh, you're, you are here. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Come forward. State your name and address, please. Jerlene Stiggins. 1124 Lakewood Park Drive, Daytona Beach, 32117. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this um, property was a uh, fire damage property, ultimately condemned. It's an eyesore. It's been a problem. It needs to be resolved. It hasn't been. The inspector is Tom Clegg. Mr. Clegg reports that the property remains in non-compliance. Nothing's being done. He's asking for a three hundred dollar day fine to a maximum of ten thousand dollars. I tend to Mr. Ten thousand. Yeah, it's it, it's it's a uh, uh, single family owner, home. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, ma'am. Un unoccupied. Unoccupied. I'm not sure. I the property is condemned by. City or that's my understanding. I'll have to have Mr. Uh, Klee clarify that okay, a little bit. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. The property is condemned from the building department part, but our part, it's uh, the walls are ready to collapse. All the numerous violations still exist. Property is homestead, I think, from the, the owner here. Don't we have a new board that deals with that? How can the property be homesteaded? Is somebody living in it? <clears throat> Shoot the owner. Yeah. So. All right. The house, um, I have um, <coughs> homestead, but what I'm saying, I still have my same address, and I've been working on this from day one. And the house might not be uh, ready to be condemned, like they say, because if you really was to look, they haven't looked inside of it. And I've been working on it, and I got the money to do the house, but the people that wanted to do it, they don't have no license. I've been running, talking to Melissa all of June, and they say they have to be licensed. So I got this paper from the, the bank. I got to take this to each builder that they have to fill out and call them. I could give it to you. If I just had a little more time, because I'm working with it, and I got approved for the money and everything. I'm not sure of the, the legal no, there's not, status. There's nothing filled out on here. No, this is what I got to give each bill. I got four of them. I just got that. And because uh, I've, I've been pre-approved, Mark. Okay, well, my thing is, are you saying that it is condemned or it was condemned? What? It's, it's condemnation placard is on it right there now. Uh, okay. The way that we... Um, determine the status of the property. It's based on the status it was at the time uh, um, that it was last occupied. It was last occupied as a uh, owner, own, owner occupied property and, and we have no information that tells us that they, they're changing that. How use. does the law work? If it's condemned, does that mean they have to tear it to the ground? That's really and beyond who issues that? No. Well, I, well, I don't know why I can speak here. to that a little okay, bit. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so when we when the building department comes out and they place a, con a condemnation placard on the building, that means the building can't be occupied. Um, that starts the process where they go through the condemnation process. During that process, and involves the other board that you referenced, right. um, there that is where the owner has the opportunity to be able to rehab the property to get it to the standard where it can be occupied, uh, or sometimes it can't. It's never going to be able to obtain that that point, and the owner can have the right to demolish it themselves. And ultimately, if they don't take action, the city could could choose to demolish the property if necessary. So that's kind of the process. She is involved in that process. Um, the notes here for this property show that they had good contact until about May, and um, and then they haven't been hearing from her since then. Um, but you said you were speaking to a Melissa. Yeah. I wrote that down. So and Kimberly, Kimberly, I've been Kim. coming back and forth in here. So okay. let me ask you question if uh, mr. Jackson if the property is condemned what what are we what is our role uh, your role as it relates to code enforcement issues is that you still proceed and and make the determinations necessary on uh, code enforcement on actions that can be taken uh, there's always uh, compliance is always remedy number of ways. One is if they're allowed to rehab or restore, then they need to be re working in that pro on that process. If they're not going to do that, then it needs to be demolished. But it, but an action or some action should be taken. Uh, the notice of condemnation was back in February. There hasn't been we're, we're not aware at least of any appeals or any act, uh, effort to take any other uh, alternative action. And the, and the, the important, most important part to remember is the condemnation process is a separate process from what we're doing here. That's handled by a different board. It's a different department. Um, so we run a, a, uh, a code case at the same time on most condemnation cases. Um, and that's because if through that appeal process it's decided the building's not going to be torn down, there needs to be a case supporting the documentation of what needs to be fixed and repaired. <laughs> okay. So, All right. she, so what she's saying is that she's working with at the time. Yeah, and I'm not sure who, and I don't know if um, uh, Captain Lee knows as far as the people she's referring to, Melissa and Kimberly, but um, my inspector says he has not had that kind of communication, so he doesn't know. That doesn't mean that she's not, just we don't really know who. All right. Um, unless he gives some more clarity. You, you know, another half minute to chime in here. 
Okay. The thing it is, when I called and talked with the uh, inspector and I talked to Mr. Jerome, I came in last month. He say it's not them, it's the people, the, the neighborhood people keep calling, saying about when are you going to do this and when are you going to do that, you know, and get it done. Okay. But I think what she's saying here is we need something to show that, you know, you are with city for rehab or whatever. And I had you know. somebody to do it. They said it could be put back together because some of the windows is not uh, broke, but they don't have the license. And so that's why they said there had to be a certified permit. I even went in there for the permit. She said that it had to show, they have to say, that they could right. do this right. with the permit through them, and she have to put it in the register to show okay. that the house right. could be put I, back I've together. Heard, um, I've, I've listened to enough. We This started in February uh, when you got notice. We gave you 60 days last time to get something done to show us that it was moving forward. I haven't seen that, so I am going to entertain a motion to oppose a fine of $200 per day against the respondent, <clears throat> effective today, and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of $10,000. Is there such a motion? Somebody else like to make a motion? <clears throat> My feeling on this is you're asking me to make a decision here, and I am totally... You, you've tried to explain it to me, but you've got three different things going on at one time. I, I, I would just like better clear. I'd like to bring it back next time, have clarification, and then make this ruling. Uh, to, to me, it seems if it's condemned, then and, and that process belongs with that other board. It's not on the. I just no, no. It's not evidently. That's not. There's a meeting Tuesday. It's not on. No, I. I just think it's just. Flo it's I day. think it's floating in limbo, and uh, uh, I. I. I Matter. There's no great harm done if we wait. Uh, Look at. I. I, would, yeah. I mean, the people that live around there are. I. Very unhappy that this prop. When was the fire? The inspectors indicate it was a year and a half ago. But I had appealed it, and i have been coming in and out talking with what, them. What I would like, okay. to, personally, I'd like to see in writing, if you say you did something, I'd like to see that copy. If you wrote a letter, I'd like to yes. see a copy. If you got a permit, I'd like to see the permit. I, I would like a record of what's transpired here. And, and a clear thing in my mind as to how the city, were. I'm not clear in this, and I don't feel comfortable voting on it, because I don't know, not, not that I'm justifying the fact you haven't done anything for all this time, but uh, neither has the city. Ms. Mr. Harrington, if I could just clarify one thing for you as far as, I think part of your thought is that there is a, uh, an action that initiates from the city as it relates to the um, Board of Building Codes. And there is, and it's an action that's initiated by a person who wants the code to review or, or uh, uh, a decision that's been made. And, and in this circumstance, there's been no request, there's been nothing from a respondent asking the board to have an action. It's not on the board's agenda and it's not so it's not the board's, I mean, while that board exists, it's not something that's right now under their pur purview. Okay. It's what, what we have right now is a, a property that is in violation that um, needs a remedy, and that's either demolition at the, uh, the current status or, or, or repair. Well, and I'm neither saying, one is happening. You know, what I'm saying, it shouldn't have been condemned then. It should have come to us, and we should have said... Uh, well, I think that uh, Mr. Lee explained the condemned sign when it was put up. But I think there's been a breakdown of communication here because I'm hearing for her that she's going in back and forth, but yeah. apparently not to the right person. Yes. So I'm going to ask if Mr. Clear could, you know. Maybe if I can clear a couple more things up. She did call me and told me, I think during the tax season, she said when April comes around, she was going to get her tax refund and start getting the permits for some of these violations. Okay. Nothing of these violations, no permits been even without the building department. In my case, there was nothing issued 
for the exterior walls, the, the roof has collapsed inside, windows, the garage door, all these violations, not one permit was obtained. And she, and she did say that, that the city, I think, originally built the house for her, if I was... If I was they remodeled it in 2010. 20, some of the, the city remodeled it, and then I think one of your friends or somebody said that they wanted the city to remodel it again. I said, we don't do that. That she has to do the permits herself, obtain them, and get the things fixed. And then the last I talked to her about that was that her tax refund's coming in. She's going to start on it, but I haven't heard anything since. I've been approved of no. 500000 What paperwork do you have to show this board? <clears throat> and I also went to school. Well, you're getting that. Um, Captain, what would you like to say? I just want to. I just want to clarify. There's not a miscommunication between departments. We put a, we put a system in place so that we're communicating back and forth. I have communication from the people who were involved in the condemnation process and the appeals process. They stated that they had communication since the end of February up until May with her almost monthly. She was communicating that she needed financing and was trying to obtain financing. And after May, communication with the person I'm speaking with uh, stopped. If there's another person she's communicating with, I took a note of that to try to track that person down and clarify after the meeting. But there has no, there's been no discernible effort made to obtain financing, which means that, that she's not proceeding forward in that process. That's their, that's their notes to me. Okay. Okay, so. Captain Lee, what I was saying about the lack of communication was with her. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure yeah. there's just a little bit of confusion on this case. I just want to make sure everybody got had the information from our side. Thank you, sir. Well, none of this is from the city. <clears throat> Does anyone want to look at this? None of it. Nothing's from the city. As I just said, I just checked the agenda. It's not on the board's agenda this month. So I talked with Mr. Don. Just last week, Mr. Don um, Gooden and Miss Paul and them, I came up and talked with them. Who? Mr. Don Gooden with the... Um, the that's part of the uh, housing and uh, housing rehabilitation program over at um, Community uh, Development. Okay. Ma'am, what you submitted here has absolutely nothing to do with the... But Ms. Kimberly... These are credit reports and... But, but Kimberly told me to report to her on everything and keep going because I did file a uh, right. appeal. Um, I'd like. I don't know who Kimberly is. Me do either. we know who Kimberly is? I do. Yes. Who? Kim Captain Lee. She's a Jew with that board. Yeah. yeah. The, Kim is the person I'm receiving my notes from. Okay. Oh. That that information has nothing to do. So right. she's the board I, secretary I for the building board. I and frankly have. No. Heard enough. I, I made a motion. I said I'd accept a motion that was not, that didn't go anywhere, so I'd like somebody else to make a motion now. I'm coming around to my way of thinking. <laughs> okay, I'd like to make a motion that a fine be imposed of $100 a day. Uh, and I don't know what the limit is, but um, up to ten thousand. Up to ten thousand yeah. dollars beginning okay. today. All right, Miss McLean has made a motion uh, to impose a hundred dollar a day fine against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of ten thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. Second, uh, Mr. Harrington. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Aye. So You're opposed that. because you want it to be higher? Yeah. Okay. All right, motion is carried. Okay. Fine is $100 a day, ma'am. If I got right. $100 uh, a day. That she understands that. Uh, and if she, okay, please um, speak to Ms. Oh. Barnes. So we have an update. And you want to give her back those, oh, do we have those it? papers? Oh, she's she's oh, you gave them back to her. Okay. All right, case number 11 is in compliance. Case number 12, CEB 0319 66, Christopher Higgins. No, not here. All right. No, no. Shift. Shift.
Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh. And call the engine. Oh, yeah. Is this the policeman? Go ahead. Oh. He's not here. Oh, I didn't. Higgins. I'm sorry. He's not here. He's not here. Mr. Higgins isn't here. CEB 031966. Oh, okay. I thought you had called. No. Called. Uh, I didn't hear you call it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> this is case number 12. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, the inspector in this case is Cliff Reckonzone, and Mr. Reckonzone reports that um, uh, the uh, respondent is um, have in litigation with the um, the contractor that they have a pending court action and trying to get the matter reserved I mean, resolved, and that he's asking if he can have a. Um, uh, we can amend, and the city is recommending amending to the September cutoff. And I would tender Mr. Records on if you have any factual questions. Uh, may I ask you a question? This started in uh, 2018, in November 2018. Yes, what really is, I thought it just needed to be finaled. Yes, um, as of right now, the, the way that the driveway is set up, you can't put pavers across the sidewalk and remove the sidewalk and put pavers there. Oh, oh, that's okay. the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I don't know that I understood that before. Okay. Yeah. So the permit can't be final the way it is, and now... So he has to put, he's responsible for putting a sidewalk back in there? Right, because it was city property. Okay. And the contractor is giving him a hard time about putting it back in, and now the city's working with the property owner to take the, the contractor to a hearing to try to force him to do the work that needs to be done. I'm not sure I understand that. <coughs> why the, building, the, the building I mean, department is working with Why is the, the contractor under the gun? It, it's part... If I'm, Go ahead. No. Well, if he's asking him to fix it, I... No, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's a different board. It's a different board. It's like a board, like the curl board. Oh, it may be. Oh, it's but it's for, it's for the building license. Okay. Jeez. For the contractor's license. What's that? The, I don't even know what board it is. Yeah. No. Oh. Okay. <coughs> it's out of the land. I think that's... Oh, the that's board. the contractor's board. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Where in town is the new centennial? This centennial uh, is out in uh, LPA? Yeah. And we're just yeah. working with them as part of the... Yeah, we're, we're it's out in LPA. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay, George, it appears. George, uh, Madam Chair, don't have enough detail, and I don't recall. Uh, Mr. Cena may uh, recall better. Uh, uh, the um, a review board for contractors out of the land is where they're going. Before, what is that? What's we have a special board over the land for con unlicensed contractors. Right, and so. Contractors. That's where they're going. City is just being a witness as to the events and the circumstance, and that's our involvement. But uh, the, their uh, effort to get that reviewed to try and uh, make the contract responsible for remedying the situation appears to be the status right now. And uh, we generally, if someone is seeking redress through I, I, court or other things, would grant them that time. So we're yeah, we're we're, we're requesting and. Uh, okay. that we grant them until the uh, September cutoff. Okay. okay. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow a respondent until September 4th, 2019 to come into compliance and be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Excellent. Motion, Mrs. Himes. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Uh, we're on case number 13, CEB 06-19-113. Dwan Warmack. Anyone here? Okay. Didn't come here last time either. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you from position of finding the inspectors. Cliff Reckonson, Mr. Reckonson reports the property remains in noncompliance. Um, and he's had no contact, no update on that, no contact so from the uh, respondent. He's asking for a $100 day fine to a maximum of $15,000. Any questions from the <coughs> board? 
Okay. The most the chair will entertain motion to impose a fine of hundred dollars per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of ten thousand dollars. Oh man. Second. Motion Ms. McClain, second Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Case number fourteen, C E B zero six one nine dash one one four, Edward Taft. Taft not here. This, uh, go ahead, Mr. Uh, Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this is before we film imposition of a fine. The inspector is Cliff Reconzone. Mr. Reconzone reports that uh, he's had no contact from the respondent. We you may recall we had a uh, concern about the pool enclosure. We did go and uh, put the lock on the uh, fence to uh, make sure uh, we did everything we can in terms of keep, keeping it secure. Uh, we're asking for a... Um, $250 fine be imposed to a maximum of $15,000. Attender Mr. Reconzone. Any questions from the board for Mr. Reconzone? No. Chair, okay. <clears throat> Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $250 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion Ms. McLean, second Mrs. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 15, C E zero six one nine dash one two five. Imogene and Fred Gilmore. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jim Pickens. I'm with the law firm McKenzie Vincent Pyle, uh, 150 South Palmetto Avenue, Daytona Beach. Uh, we represent the estate of Fred Gilmore, um, 122 Springwood Drive, Daytona Beach. Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Ms. Cliff Rickens on is the inspector in this case. I have spoken with Mr. Pickens. Uh, this property, the permits have been issued. We're just waiting for permits to final. Um, and so we're asking for that to be amended to the next cutoff. Now, turn to Mr. Rickens on. So the work has been done. Uh, the work has been permitted and approved. I spoke with both contractors for the remaining issues for the uh, siding and or the shingles and the garage extension. Um, we're just waiting in queue. Uh, hopefully, by the next go around, both projects should be completed. <coughs> Satisfactory to everybody. Yep. All right, Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance and allow respondent until 7:31 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration and a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance, compliance is achieved. Such a motion? So moved. Motion, Ms. McClain, is second? Second. Second, Mrs. Himes, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, opposed, <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. If it gets Thank full work done, you don't have to be here next month. Right. Perfect. Compliance Perfect. is compliance. <laughs> we don't need to do it again. Thank you. Just making sure you're staying contact so you can get it. Off. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Thank Great. You. Thank you. All right. Case number 16, CEB 06-19-112, Sandora Davis and Kenzel Washington. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address, please. Uh, 349 Wilson <laughs> Avenue, um, Miss Angela Darby. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Angela Darby. Angela Darby. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this one. Let's see. So you are the no. mother of yes, Sandra. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. good memory. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Out of all the people, you remember that. You got a good memory. Okay. Smart lady. <laughs> Away from Mr. Jackson in the okay. uh, Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Cliff Reconzone. Mr. Reconzone reports that the property remains in non compliance. He was contacted yesterday by the um, respondent. Uh, she said she'd be in compliance by the end of the week. Uh, however, uh, he went and looked at it yesterday and he it's just, it's still a non-compliance. I would tend to Mr. Reckons on the, to speak to the facts on that, uh, but we're asking for a $100 day fine to a maximum of $10,000. Mr. Reckons on. Questions for Mr. Reckons on? 
Has anything been done? Uh, there's been a little bit of work done. Uh, they've removed the, the foliage from the top of the, the, garage, uh, the carport. Uh, a lot of the garbage has been removed from the property. There's still junk vehicles on the property. There's still parking in the front yard. Um, there's, there's still a lot to d be done in the front yard there. Um, yeah. Can I speak? Well, yes, yeah, one second. So we still have the car issues. They're not tagged. They're, are they tagged? Yeah. They're, they're yeah. tagged, but they have flat tires, and you could tell that a couple of the vehicles were not operable. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, the accessory structure, does that need to be fixed or is it, was it just a matter of the weeds growing on it? It, it looked like at, at the time when I first took the pictures that um, it might have been structurally unsound, mm -hmm. but after everything was removed, it looks like the structure will be okay. Okay. And the roof? Was part of that. The, the oh, week. that was the accessory yes, structure yes, and, yep. and the drainage. Okay, and accumulation of rubbish. Okay, go ahead, Angela. All right, I did a lot of work last night, uh, I, I, yesterday, and he said he wasn't going to get, I just need about, about a week because he's seen a lot of stuff. My family, we was doing it. We couldn't pay nobody to do it, but we been really corresponding and done. So, I mean, I did a lot of stuff yesterday after he left, and in about a week it'll be done. This is just little things. Um, I mean, it needs to be done. It'll be completed. Okay. Because you were first notified about this in yes, January. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I know our family. We've been January 2018? No, I think, no. No, no, that's incorrect. But it says Not on, on this. here. No, that's incorrect. No. Let her check. Okay, we'll let her check. No, it was in March. The green card was signed on uh, 131. What year? 2019. 2019. 2019. Okay. So All right, y'all don't get me don't get me mad with the woman, the, the lady child. Okay. I don't, don't do that. It's an error. <laughs> we take care of errors. Any agenda to make it nineteen? I ain't a bad person though. No, no, no. no. You got a photograph of memory. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, look, the next cutoff date is July thirty first. That's not very many days from now. Okay, that'd be that fine. I'll be to clean that up. Yes, ma'am. Get in touch with Mr. Reckonzone and make sure it's done because next time. Ooh. All right, I'm going to get him out of my head. In my opinion, this okay. is just my opinion. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but in my opinion, this needs to be done. Yeah, you know, I'm a motivated person. He's he looking at how he done been around a person, a lot of person pull a leg, but he know, he know I'm, we a hard working family. We clean up that place by so he could verify. He ain't just not saying something, so I am. It will be done. Okay. Is everybody on the okay. board okay with this? One yes. more time. One more time. Yeah. All right. <coughs> okay. All right. Chair Valentine, motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 731-2019 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. No All right. Uh, motion, Ms. Himes, is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed, motion carries. You need to get with Mr. Oh, Williams to get I, it done. I, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessing. Thank you. Case number 17 is in compliance. Case number 18, CEB 0319-62, Kelly Rose. State your name and address, please. Kelly Rose, 1146 Hermitage Court, Port Orange, Florida, 321. Two nine. Yes. And are you also going to testify? Possibly Roger Rose. <laughs> Husband. Gotcha. Raise your hand. <coughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's a month ago. I did that. That's been on Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine, the inspector is Danny Garcia. 
Mr. Garcia reports that it's taken some time, but the uh, respondent finally making progress and uh, has an amount left that should be easily be, uh, done by the next cutoff. And so Mr. Garcia is asking that we amend to the next cutoff. Right. <coughs> and I send to Mr. Garcia. I'll just make a motion that we amend to the next cutoff. All right. Do, do you want to say anything? Can you get this done by the next cutoff, right? Yes, I can. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Ms. McLean made a motion to amend to the the uh, previous order until next to the next cutoff, which is yes. seven thirty-one. Is there such a motion? Motion. I made a motion. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. McLean. Motion. Uh, <laughs> it's out second. of order. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm second. Oh, in favor say aye. Aye. Like side of per, uh, same sign. All right. Yes. <coughs> Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay. So next. Keep in touch. So we can. Yeah. Make sure that you get in touch with weeks. Mr. Garcia when it's finished. All right. Uh, case number 19, CEB 0619-109, Rosalie Riley. Not was not here last time. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for not, uh, for uh, imposition of a fine. The inspector is Danny Garcia. Mr. Garcia reports that. Um, he acknowledged that they're, they're doing some work on it, but he's had no contact. Uh, we're asking for, it's been since March, um, he's asked for a $100 per day fine to a maximum of $15,000, and I would uh, attend to Mr. Garcia. Hey, uh, that's a pretty hefty fine, $400 no, per day? No, it's $100. Oh, $100. Okay. okay. <laughs> Four hundred. I'm going. Whoa. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Any questions for Mr. Garcia? All right. The chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of a hundred dollars per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum of fifteen thousand dollars. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion, Ms. McLean, second Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. <coughs> Case number 20, CEB 12 18 159. Audrey Houston. Or I, I think someone was here last time. I think they're here now. Okay, good. Come forward, please, and be sworn in. State your name and address. Hi, Kenyatta Jones, 774 Tumblebrook Drive, and that's in Port Orange, Florida. Debbie Filer, 67 Universal Trail, Palm Coast, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Your last name is Siler or Filer? Filer. Filer. Okay. Um, what is your relationship to the owner, to Miss Houston? That's my mother. Okay, so your daughter. What is your relationship? I am her niece. Niece. But are you part owner of this truck, the property yeah, as well? Oh, so you you are part owner. Are you part owner? And not this time. Oh, not, <laughs> okay. All right, Mr. Jackson. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Jerome McCoy. Um, as you see, this has been going on for a very long time, uh, and we've kind of had different points of. of um, situations arising as we, we've we gotten to this point. There have been permits issued. There had been some work started. It's not done. It's not final. Um, Mr. McCoy, I think we talked about this at the last uh, hearing, that the board's request was that it, it all be final and that they be done. Uh, Ms. McCoy is asking that we impose a fine of $150 per day to a maximum of $15,000. And I tend to Mr. McCoy. Okay.
Any questions for Mr. McCoy? Looks like there's a lot done, and this was first notified in October of 2017. Correct? Good morning, Jerome McCoy. Morning, sorry. Code Inspector for the city. My credentials are on file. Uh, yes, it, it is uh, a case that's been running for quite some time. <laughs> uh, however, um, when we came into the last two months, um, yeah. the last two months uh, meeting, months previous, right, previous right. Mm -hmm. um, it was ordered that you know everything be completed. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Um, I, however, a permit was uh, it, it was issued to them. Um, a roof permit? Yeah, a mm -hmm. roof permit was issued, and, and the roof it, it actually had started. Try to get to that photo. They started the work. However, it's not completed, uh, and I have been called for a reinspection. I just I went by yesterday and took that that photo. Um, I can't tell from that picture. Is that roof finished? No, no, that's no, not finished. No. That's just the, okay. the the beginning process of it. Oh, okay. that's how it there used it to is. Look. Okay. Is there a licensed contractor doing that work? Licensed contractor, yes, it, it, it was uh, issued by a licensed contractor. The permit is on file. Uh, Florida uh, Interstate Roofing Company is the is the company that. And when that did they start? The permit was issued on. The uh, on five May seventh okay. of twenty nineteen, um, and and it was it was it was applied for and it was approved on the on the, the next day the eighth, um, and the, and the work had when, begun. Um, when was the contractor hired? Sir, I don't know. I I'm only what? here. All right. Are you at, who are you asking? Okay. Do you know uh -huh. when, you know, when, when, you know when the work you, was started? When did you start this? Okay, we are we are here today because of the family. However, my mom called me and told me she was not coming, so I was okay. not going to be let no one represent us. Okay. So I did speak to the contractor this morning. Um, he said that he started the work. However, there was some um, a couple of issues, financing issues, so I can get with the rest of the family later and discuss that. Well, there are some that, financing issues, is what you said. There were some issues with the rest, and he said he would just um, do it with payments with the family. Don't she had a <clears throat> has any other all of the rest of this work taken place, like the electrical system hazards, insect screen, smoke detectors? That's the work that I can't. I haven't been able to inspect because I haven't been called for a reinspection on that. Um, and initially, when I uh, Spoke with the owner, you know. I, I suggested that they would start with the roof first mm -hmm. because everything else mm -hmm. falls up under that. Mm -hmm. And they did start the roof, however, it's not complete. And, and we're just and learning that it wasn't completed this morning. <coughs> that you what? We're just learning that it wasn't complete this morning. Who does that contractor report to in your family? My mother. Let me ask you a question. You were, uh, the owner, Ms. Houston, was notified in October of 2017. What's taken so long to do this? If the owner was aware, ma'am, but no one else was aware. So I'm not really sure exactly what hindered her. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, okay. That's so you really can't speak for her? Well, as her daughter, I just will just say that I don't feel like she's very capable of handling personal business. Well, June, how many other relatives own this? This owners? Your mother and she was deceased. 
All right, you have um, Miss Houston, Audrey Houston, mm -hmm. which is 33 and a third. Okay. Um, Dorothy Murphy, who is 33 and a third. Who is that? My mother. Okay, that's oh, your, mother. your mother. Okay, okay. Edward Jones, it's his estate as well, um, which is 11 percent. He's deceased. He's deceased. It's his right. estate. Oh, okay. okay. And Tamara Jones, which is 11 percent. And Cedric Davis, which is 11 percent. Okay. So there's five. Well, I don't think we, we can resolve those no, we can. things. I think that maybe 150 a day is a little high, but $100 a day, fine, because something's I'll not second. moving. Yeah. Is that a motion? Is that a motion? That's a motion. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Harrington has made a motion uh, to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance <coughs> is achieved or reaches a maximum of $15,000. And Ms. Heim seconded that. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, so hopefully you'll get this fixed as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you. Case number 21-CEB01-19-08, Evelina Brockington. Anyone here? Yes, he's coming. Come on. She's been here before. <laughs> Your name and address, please. Good morning, Evelina Brockington, 626 South Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is John Stinson. Mr. Stinson reports that um, the respondent is has really been doing anything of late. Uh, none, of, none of her promises have been kept. Um, he's asking that a fine be imposed so the property remains in non-compliance. He's asking for a $250 per day fine to a maximum of $10,000. And I would tender uh, Mr. Stinson. Questions for Mr. Stinson? Okay. Not a lot of progress has been made. Uh, good morning, John Stinson, uh, code inspector with the city. My qualifications are on file. Um, no, there has not been a lot accomplished on the property. There's been a lot of movement of the items on the property, but it's still in non-compliance. Well, um, I see that. I mean, who's living there now? Do we know? Are you living there now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Because I had written down that it was vacant, but it's not <coughs> vacant. You're living there? Yes. Okay. I want to know. There were, did you get permits as you promised us? It said we needed um, them by this month. Ma'am, um, I want to see the pictures that he took yesterday. The what? The pictures that he took yesterday. That's that's older right there. And last month he stated everything. Did was, you get a permit for the roof? I'm on the buying program, and um, I'm, I got to pay, um, get up another tax year, and then I will be, then continuously what they got to do and whatever they ask me for, because they say I didn't have homestead, which I did, and I don't have, I don't own another house, which they say I had owned another house, and I owned that in 2000, 2001, I had gave up the house. But um, I want to, he just told me, he took pictures yesterday. I want to see the pictures from yesterday because I don't put out much. I don't put out flowers. It's not even looking like that no more. And I don't see how he can say I ain't worked or did anything when I can't well, move, when I finish pretty, every day. there's um, extensive work to be done here. That's, it don't even look like that no more. Yeah. I would like to uh, speak to the issue, her, her uh, statement that she's, in the VINE program and 
make this available. I don't know what that is, really. Okay, so, well, yeah. uh, it's a... Um, uh, I'm also in the city program as well. ...that assists mm -hmm. people. Uh, we, we'll, we have one property owner that's working through the VIME program on a magistrate, and they come in and they can assist and help them with, uh, specifically this with uh, roofing and, and construction. <laughs> but, but we do have, we, we made some communication with them. We do have a response that uh, I make available okay. to the board. Is that a private organization? Is it government related? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a private organization to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I'm, the inspectors kind of have a little bit more knowledge by far uh, of uh, in terms of having communication and getting a better understanding of the program. We've kind of been dealing with them with a pri another property for quite some time. Uh, it is a process like many of the, um, the private not-for-profit processes that take some, uh, uh, quite a bit of time. Okay. As, as uh, Madam Chair will note as she's reading there that it appears that that's not really what's happening in this circumstance. Yeah, let me read this to everybody. This is from the court our records and find and as well as qualifiers from Ms. Brockington. We attempted last year three times to contact her via telephone and then mailed a letter to her last July. I do not believe she has come forward. Did she provide a name of her case manager assigned to her? It also appears she owns multiple properties. This would disqualify her from the Vine services. The other issue is that she owes taxes on two properties and neither home is homesteaded that I can see. That's not true. Miss <laughs> Bro Brockington, if I were to go with you now, we're going we're to go to lunch and then we're going to go over to this property. Please uh, do. Junk, are you going to show me any junk vehicles or are they all gone? All gone. Every junk vehicle's gone. Yes, he stated that to y'all last month. And that's the old picture. Where the new picture okay. from? He said he took right. yesterday. The roof is not fixed. No, that's the only thing. And there's thing. no permit, and that was and promised. The broken see, windows are not fixed. I didn't promise. Uh, no, no broken paperwork windows. Paperwork permits were. It says needed by this month, yeah. meaning today. What paperwork? Permits on the roof. That the buying program is. is I'm, I'm, look, I'm at a stop. Well, that's not I pay the other property. How about well, I don't know where he hit that from, but that's not true. I owned it another house on Derbyshire years right, ago. Okay. How I, about the plumbing? Is that done? Yes. The plumbing is done? Yes. You have a bill that, you, that yes. shows you were, it's been paid? And, and call, them, call downstairs. We, we don't call. You're supposed to provide. I didn't know. He, he stated all that to y'all last month. I'm not understanding this. Y'all asked him everything. Was the address there? Was this there? He stated everything was yes. But the, the buying program, I did own two taxes on the own one house. And I got to get one more um, tax year. I got one. I'm working on the other. And it don't look like that no more. I just asked him in here, did he take the pictures yesterday? Okay. Um, I, at this point, would like to... Uh, and I'm on the city redevelopment um, program as well with Ms. Long. I was on there with Ms. Brad. I was on there with Ms. Williams. This, oh. nice, Ms. this is in the CRA? Yes, downstairs. Upstairs. And I, Mr. Bryant. Mr. Bryant, would you please come forward? And Madam Chairman, before we go there, to the um, the statement of regarding the um, the utility services, uh, we have a correspondence from uh, utility billing for the city that says that the account is currently disconnected for non-payment. And I say current; that was as of uh, uh, middle June, and that it was scheduled to be closed uh, completely on June seventeenth. So. Okay. If there has been something, it would have had to have been since then. I would ask her to show that proof. What, 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 what was, care. What was that, that? That's enough. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, um, is, are you in fact working with Ms. Brockington at this point? Is the city working with Ms. Brockington at this point in the CRA? I guess you have to just, he has yeah, to be sworn, sworn in. Sworn. All right. What is the CRA? You have to be sworn in. Did you state his name? Not yet. State your name. I stated Press it. <laughs> name. Uh, Charles Bryant, Redevelopment Project Manager for the City of Daytona Beach. Do you sign a <coughs> or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay, so the question is, is there anything in the works with Ms. Brock? I think she's mistakenly saying redevelopment. She's outside the redevelopment area. Okay. I think she might be saying community development. I don't know if she's spoken to anyone in that department. Okay. But Ms. Long, I'm on the program, Ms. Long. 
then she say as when some of them don't give them the paperwork that they need, then it'll, I'll be more in the tool. But it's the redevelopment that I've been on. That's I'm on. I'm on that as well. The re redevelopment is right. you're outside the redevelopment area. Right. You're not so in. So it's not redevelopment. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, All right. I think you're ready for a motion. Okay. Um, Maybe. The chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $250 per day against the respondent effective today. Excuse me. Until compliance Excuse me. achieved a maximum of $10,000. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Uh, motion, Ms. McLean. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like aye. sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Case number 22, CEB 0319-69, Chester Perkowski. Is Mr. Perkowski here? Okay. Is, this that, is this that same case that keeps going on about clearing the title? or Which one? This one? This one. And oh, yeah, this was the one demolition. Yeah, it's on no, so. Silver Beach at the <coughs> yeah. Yeah. office. Yeah. 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 And he hasn't yeah. been here, so... Okay. Uh, okay so. No, so. I don't think so. Maybe the first time, Maybe the first time he was okay. here. Okay. Is this I, I think we're ready to impose upon All right, well, let, let Mr. Jackson say what the city recommends, and then we'll... Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Steve Alderman. Steve Alderman reports that the um, respondent has been in constant contact with him. Permits have been approved. Um, they, they were applied for, issued, and approved. I mean, approved and issued. And so now it's a process of getting the work done. Uh, he's asking to amend to the, to the uh, September cutoff. To the September cutoff. He believes that's how much time it would take for this project to be completed. I would tend to Mr. Uh, Alderman for your factual questions. Question. The permits have been applied, uh, are in effect? Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, good members morning. of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Steve Alderman, Neighborhood Services Inspector for the City of Daytona Beach. Uh, Mr. Perkowski has been in pretty much constant contact with me, and I've learned much more about the legal processes of removing debt load on one property and applying it to another, and then getting a, an entire structure pre prepared for demolition. Um, <coughs> the permit was applied for 610 because it took that long to get the transfer of title and debt load to, from one property to another. Uh, the permit is approved 7-5. And during that time, he actually has done the checklist for the city for the pre-demo uh, utilities removal. Everything is okay. done. And all that stuff has been much quicker than the simple transfer of, of okay. debt. And I believe that uh, he has been in constant contact with me. Um, and so he wasn't going to be here today. He said if I could handle all this right but, uh, as long as yeah he is constantly working on it. i can say that it has not been started yet because i was there on the 8th okay do you know if he has a contractor for yes he does you? yes he does. he does okay okay i'm not sure which one i'm hoping it's sam sula matter i mean okay all right so and you think you should have it done by the end of the month he says September. if his contractor is uh uh nine four a good one on our list that the city uses, absolutely. He did come up with a requirement to remove a couple of extra slabs that were not attached to the initial property, but that's a large chunk of land on the corner, and he had to include that because it was part of that. So we're saying by 731 this work can be done? It should be, yes. Okay. okay. Contractors really only take about four or five days to get it done complete and smooth. All right. Chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance law respondent until 731-2019 to come into compliance or be returned to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is it 731 or was it 9-4? Uh, 731 is what they said. I asked twice, right? Uh, yeah, I was thinking 9. But do, well, do you... Is this 9-4 or 731? 9-4, please. Nine, four, yes. That's okay. Let me amend that. Chair, I take a motion to uh, amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow a respondent until 
before 2019 to come yeah. into compliance. If we wait long enough, maybe the hurricane will knock it down. That's right. <laughs> Is there such a motion? I move. So moved. All right. Mr. Quain, second. Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 23, CEB 0619120, Mary Kathleen Langan. Not here. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector, Steve Alderman. Mr. Alderman reports that he's had no contact from the respondent. He, we've done all the proper notifications required by law. We're asking for a fine of $200 per day be imposed to a maximum of $10,000. And I tend to Mr. Alderman. Okay. Mr. Alderman, somebody lives there? No, it's no. been vacant for quite some time, and actually it has con uh, condemnations uh, posters on it as well. Okay. And I believe they were uh, put on in 2017. 2017? Okay. The po postings, yes. <coughs> All right. Uh, yeah, no show, no contact ever, really. No, nothing. Okay. Um... So Make this is look. a, well, I don't want to get into that what again. What kind of service we have these people? Uh, what kind of service we have? Did they sign for the cartridge? Post the property? Yeah. Yes, it's been posted. Okay. Uh, uh, certified letters returned, posted, okay. and then posted again for this. Make sure just we have okay, yes. posted. Is this an out-of-town owner? Um, sign for it? Yes, I believe she is, but she's in the state of Florida. And where? Yes, I'm sorry. Where? Maryland. Maryland, okay. They did sign for it, it was posted. So yeah, okay. All right. I'm always a little concerned when we don't hear anybody. Else. Right, nothing. Mm -hmm. Right, nothing. all right. Okay. So, she's, it's been posted. Cheryl, entertain a motion to impose a fine of $200 per day against the respondent effective today and continue until compliance is achieved or reaches a maximum of $10,000. Is there such a motion? So mm -hmm. moved. Second. <laughs> okay, motion, Ms. McLean, second. Mr. Harrington, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed, motion carries. All right, on to our new cases. Time for a break. Time, <coughs> time for a break. All right, five minutes, please. Yeah. Um, all right, we're going to come back to the board. I have in front of me uh, your cases, the volume that are left. And I'm going to do that. I have to do that in order to do so. I'm going to start. These are new cases. Uh, and I'm going to start with case number 33. Okay. <laughs> that person in New Germany is here. We always like it when people show up. <laughs> State your name and address, please. My name is Brenda German King, um, 3525 Ola Street, Jacksonville, Florida, or 501 Butler here in Daytona Beach. And I'm mother of Amy German. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for the determination of compliance or non-compliance. Now, the inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports he's been in communication with the respondent. They have a lot of work they got to do. Uh, you probably need to hear a little bit more about that from Mr. Jones. But we're asking that you make a finding of noncompliance, but give them until the October cutoff to come into compliance. Uh, do we need a progress report in the interim? No, I don't think so. Okay, and he doesn't believe we need a progress report, but I tend to Mr. Uh, Jones if you have any uh, other factual questions. Questions for Mr. Jones. All right, would you like to say anything? Nope. Oh, <laughs> we have a question for you, Mr. Jones. Okay. Yes, uh, I did, just to give you a little bit more information, I did get an affidavit uh, from the property owner who is <laughs> stating that they will not occupy it. It's not occupied. It's a two rental unit. Uh, that it's not occupied at this time and they will not occupy it until they get the repairs. Uh, they bought this property the first of the year. When they started doing some of the rehab, they realized there was a lot more maintenance that needed to be flooring, you know, some things that just needed to be uh, repairs. 
and uh, they are working on it. So I have no problem as long as it's not being uh, occupied. That that property is over by the auditorium. Yes. Okay, so that is in the CRA. Okay. Yes. No, we're just working. We're we're very happy to be here. And, correct. You just acquired this recently? Um, I think in December, and we had renters in it, uh, both units. One was going to stay, but ultimately the downstairs. Um, the downstairs renters moved out February 1st and the upstairs renter wanted to stay but never paid rent so we started eviction and she moved in February so we really didn't get into the property until March and we've been working ever since and with termite issues and we do too thank you in order to respond to come into compliance by the uh, October cutoff date, which is 10 2 2019, to be returned to the board for consideration of finding up to $2,000 per day. So, such a motion. So moved. Okay, motion Mr. Harrington, second Ms. Hans, all in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. Okay, case number 34 is next. Mm -hmm. 071913 and Myara, 34 and 35. All right, 34 and 35. State your name and address, please. Simon Myara, 1131 Bel Air Drive, Daytona Beach. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony of your bachelor pod is the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll do these separately. But they're, they're the same issues. <coughs> yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. Uh, because we were slightly out of order, I think Mr. Jones stepped out with the. Um, oh, you see, oh, there he is. Um, I just want to confirm that nothing has changed since we had. Um, so if I can take just a brief second to do that. This is uh, number thirty. Okay. All right. So, um, what Mr. Jones reports is that he hasn't had any contact with anyone on the case. Um, it is a, uh, they don't have a rental license. It is a uh, uh, rental property, uh, don't have a business tax receipt. So, he's asking that we, um, uh, that you make a finding of non-compliance and order them to come into compliance by next cutoff. Where would you like to tell us? It was sold. We sold it. We bought it uh, about two weeks ago. It was bought, and there was no. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, this one and this one is in the process of being sold. They're both in the process of being sold. Let's do this one first. Okay. My sister. My sister. Sorry. Yes. 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 Let's make sure that that's the right one. Two, so, so 202 is 202 sold. sold. Yes. Okay. It was bought. I, you know what? I have it on my phone, but I didn't. I didn't. It was sold two weeks ago. Yeah, it was signed. The new. The new. Probably won't show up. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Two weeks. It should be there. Um, Did you sell it to living. people who are living, going to live in it? You don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask. I just know we bought it and okay. sold it. It wasn't even a. Uh, it was it by warranty D with a title company and all of that, or was it quick claim? Yeah, no, no, it was a more. It was a, a, a with a title, title company. company. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah We yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. have have exactly. That. Okay. 
Well, I mean, sometimes they'll get things up on the site there. I understand. Yeah, yeah. why don't we continue it? I mean, this is a compliance, not compliance. We're probably, based on what we're being told, if, if we can confirm that, yeah. it's more, more than likely we'll be withdrawing and reciting the new owner. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So Once we're able to verify that, so if we can continue just that. Okay. You wouldn't sign a new, new owner if they're going to live in it. Right, same, right, the same circumstances, right, right determining whether it's a uh, rental property or not. All right, so the chair will entertain a motion to continue the case until uh, that was going to be all of the meeting, right? Like yes. 8-8, eight, eight, no, yeah, 8-8, eight, eight, 2019. Well, who's going to that come? Case, now that, that, the that'll, be the, that'll be the new owners that have to come? I guess we well, we'll notice them if that's the circumstance, or we'll, we'll this. Sounds like they're just yeah. going to drop the, it and then. Yeah, based on what's determined, it very well may be that we'll be dismissing on this case, citing a new case, right. and, and so this will be done with. Right. Okay. Uh, now, the next case is actually that's uh, your assistant, right? Yes. Um, so you're surprised. CEB 071912. <coughs> On that one? Yeah. I moved. Motion to continue. So moved. Motion, Mr. Harrington. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Harrington. Second. 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 Yes, two or three, same thing. It's the same thing. They're they're running the process. No, it hasn't been sold yet. It's it's. Oh, so this was different. Hopefully. Okay. <laughs> there, there's yeah 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, well, this one might be a uh, you called it quick quick claim. Quick claim. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, different circumstance. Yeah. Yes, Madam Chair, and as position of the city is we need, would ask for a finding of non-compliance okay. and uh, next cut off to come into compliance. Okay. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent non-compliance or respond to community compliance by the next cut off date, September 31, 2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there such a motion? No move. Motion, Mr. Harrington, second, Mr. Yes. Real quick, I did uh, um, go to the city to get the licenses, but then when I was told they were going to be sold, I was like, no need to. I'm sorry, I'm. I'm yeah. Okay. 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 Please, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Now, case 36, uh, 0719-130, Jackie Marie Spencer. State your name and address, please. Uh, Jackie Marie Spencer, uh, 648 North Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that uh, the property remains in non-compliance. He had had no contact up until yesterday from the respondent, um, but um, nevertheless, he believes that our next call-off would be a reasonable time to bring the property into compliance. They'd have scheduled a uh, inspection. Attend to Mr. Jones if you have any factual questions. Mr. Jones, I'm looking at the roof here. Is that just something in the picture that I'm seeing, or is that part of the work that needs to be done? I have not had a chance yet to inspect this property. Um, so until I get out to the property to inspect it, I, right. I can't say what all exactly. needs to be re okay. taken care of. Yeah. What would you like to tell us, Mr. Spencer? Um, I, I, uh, Spoke with Mr. Jones yesterday because I, I think it was just, excuse my voice, a uh, big mis misunderstanding and miscommunication. Um, I did receive 
um, a notice about a rental license for the first time uh, in February of uh, 25th on the 27th. I came in and purchased a license. Um, and then it was determined uh, later in, in May that I didn't pay enough because it's indeed a duplex and I needed to pay an extra $50. So, so you're talking about a business tax receipt? No, I paid, I paid that. Or the rental license? No, it is a duplex. And yeah. when he came in, he paid for one rental license oh, okay. and yeah, needed yeah. two. So, in, in, um, so on the 25th of February, I was informed I need to purchase a rental license. And I came in on 27th and purchased it but not paid enough. I uh, only paid 90 and I needed to pay 140 okay. So in May of uh, 21st, I was informed that I needed to pay more before an inspection can be made. So I came in on the 27th and paid the extra $50 and has been waiting to hear about an inspection. And uh, the only notification I've gotten since then was to appear here. So I was still waiting to hear for an inspection from, I got a call from a, from a, a lady saying that I needed to uh, pay more before the inspection can be made. And, um, so we're here today just to determine compliance or non-compliance and yeah. you don't have your rental license yet. Yeah, he explained that to me that you don't actually have the license until, uh, the license until the inspection, in inspection is made. Yeah, so, so what, so, so uh, what we're doing today mm -hmm. is determining that you don't have that, you're not in compliance, yeah. And that we'll, we'll give you till the end of the month to have that done. Yeah, I think we scheduled an inspection okay. uh, already. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Cheryl, entertain a motion. Everybody else? Give them a yeah. Cheryl, entertain a motion for the fine respondent. Not just the fine respondent. by the next cutoff date, 731 2019. We'll be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. So moved. So, all right. Okay. Motion, Mr. Harris, and second. Aye. Aye. Like, sign, post. Motion, Carrie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 25th. Yeah, 25th. Um, all right. Yeah, we all clear? All right. Yeah, all right. You're, you're all, right. all good. So, you get that inspection done, and we're good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, My name is Andrea Anderson. My address is 501 North Keat Street, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay, well, you're from Mr. Jackson first, then we'll give you a chance uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the um, uh, junk vehicle has been removed. Uh, the property remains in, in non-compliance as a whole. Uh, he's asking for next cutoff for the property to be brought into compliance. I tend to Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes, ma'am. And who is Josephine? Josephine is my mother. My mother is okay. deceased. Yeah. Um, what would you like to tell us? I would like to tell you that um, based on the fact that um, I don't know the part that he says that's still not in compliance was um, I think the, uh, the tarp that's on the house. Uh, I got the junk. Uh, what I had on the letter was... Um, Um, for it says, um, let me see if I can see it. Oh. Hold on one second. 
I think it was for like the paint peeling and uh, the junk vehicle and um, he told me that I needed to put uh, my address on the house and that I had to have that tarp removed based on the facts that um, when Irma, the storm came, it ripped some of my shingles off and I had been, uh, I had applied to uh, FEMA and FEMA kept denying me and I kept making appeals and I kept making appeals and when I spoke to him, I told him that last I was waiting for FEMA to make their final decision. Well, FEMA decided that they paid me for the bed and the dresser and stuff that got messed up in my son's room, but they did not repair the roof. So I had that problem. So I had to cover up my roof in order to save the rest of my stuff. I had to relocate stuff in my house. So at that point, um, when I spoke with him, I told him that I was doing that. So I went out, I got the um, address and I put it on the front of the house. And I went to, uh, he referred me to go down to uh, the city dump to get some paint so that I could paint the house. So I went and got the paint. And at that time, I was, you know, I was really, really frustrated. And um, so what I did is I went to, um, I heard about a new program called Rebuild Florida. So I went to the Rebuild Florida, um, I made an appointment and I went over to Orlando and I spoke with a representative from Rebuild Florida. And she told me the information that I needed in order for them to help me because of victims who did not get their house uh, fixed because of Irma and FEMA um, denied them, they would be able to help them. So at that point, when I got there, she told me that uh, the problem was um, with me, and I'm in the process right at this moment, is that the house was deeded to my mother, and then she quit claim deeded to, to me and my brother. And in the process, she died. So what I did is I went back, got my brother, we got a quick claim deed, and we submitted it to DeLand. Well, in DeLand, they told us that it wasn't able to be quick claimed. I needed to have it probated. So at that time, I decided that um, I have no other choice other than to get it probated. So what I did is I went to, um, I have attorney Joan Anthony, and I, I retained her as my probate attorney. And I have a letter from her, and um, it's in my bag, I can get it. I have a letter from her, I can go and get it right now, that um, she is my attorney for probate, and she will be starting to probate. I was waiting for the death certificate, which I got the death certificate from my mother. And um, at this point, um, my brother is back in town. He was living in um, South Carolina. Is he living at the house now? No, I am. So he had... Yes, ma'am. So in order for Rebuild Florida to help me, the house has to be in my name. So I have to go through the probate part to get it put in my name. I have the paperwork. Now I can take this to her. Uh, it came in the mail, as a matter of fact, yesterday, the death certificate. So I could take it to Attorney Lowe, and she'll start the probate process. Was it your mom's, was it your mom's property? Sir? Was it homesteaded property? Actually, because my mother died, they won't let me homestead it. I have to get it in my name in order to get it. Homestead. homestead it's not a big deal. No, it's not a big deal, sir. It's just not in my name. And um, I was wondering, based on the fact that uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, he saw that I could do what I could do. If he would like me to, I'll peel the paint off right now right. and paint it. But the bottom line is, Rebuild Florida told me if they come in, they would probably be able to build me a whole new house. All right, I'm going to stop you. I understand and appreciate all the problems you're having, the legal problems you're having. It seems like a lot. Um, what I'd like to, I mean, right now we're just here to say whether you're in compliance or not in compliance. Um, you, you know, these things aren't fixed, so you're not in compliance. That means that you come back next month and tell us what's going on you know, another bite of this apple. And in the meantime, it looks like you're working on things, so work on things and see what you can get done. And then come back uh, next month. Because you're not, I mean, you can see you're not in compliance. I mean, okay, yes, ma'am. Um, what I would like to say. Really, that's all this hearing is for, Okay, well, I would like to say that I'm still not going to be in compliance next month based on the fact that I'm going to have to keep. you will get to come here and tell us <coughs> or, uh, what, or report to us and stay in touch with Mr. Fitzgerald. What's going on? Tell them exactly what's going on, what you've been able to accomplish, what you haven't been able to accomplish. 
Madam well, Chair, we're, we're, we're kind of thinking, at least from the perspective of the staff, is that perhaps at least going until the, uh, what's that, September? October going 60 24. days to, to okay. and then start, start the progress reporting because uh, it sounds like she got the things in place. She has right. had some contact and at least right. she seems to be uh, working with peop the people she needs to be working with at this stage. And so in about 60 days, we'll probably have more information, more, more, more answers. Uh, would I be able to, um, could ma'am, could I just request one other thing? Could I be able to uh, request um, the October date based on the fact that I have uh, one more property tax to pay, but I had to pay the attorney, and I will have to pay the last property tax on that? So what we're asking for is that you come back October 4th? Uh, I think it's October the 10th. October the 10th, no problem. And you tell us what's going on. When okay, would you like me to paint the house, sir, and move the paint before okay. then? What we're going to do now is we're going to do a non-compliance and order you progress. We'll vote on it and order you uh, to report for a progress report. Yes, ma'am. the 10th of October. Okay. When you come back, bring back the paperwork. Just let us know where you are in the probate process. Yes, sir. We know you're close to getting... Well, by that time, you may own the property by that time. No problem. And now, if I can interrupt, and I know we're just being a stickler here, but we, you know, we were kind of suggesting the September, and oh, October sorry, is a little bit, said. well, two months, whatever that is. I thought that was the September meeting, right? With July, August, and September. No, she's not the owner of the property. I just asked so for the probate, October date the based on the fact that... Um, the real owner in front of us. Right. So, but I guess our thought is just m making sure uh, she don't get too far down without... Sorry. Making sure no. that things are happening. Yeah. Yeah. We're not expecting compliance. We realize it's going to be a little bit more time before we actually get to Nine compliance. Twelve, you come back and tell us what's going on. <coughs> Nine twelve. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So September, you come back and give us a progress report. Let us know. And are, are are you local? I thought you were local, right? Five hundred one North Key Street. Yeah. So so if you don't, yeah, if if, if that seems for us, that would seem to just be a little bit better I, I just in like terms to, of making sure we got everything rolling. I I just like to say also, Mr. Fitzgerald, uh, did you receive an email from um, Rebuild Florida? I gave her your email address, and she was supposed to send you an email that she was in the process of assisting me. We'll right, work together. Let, let us get on with this. And okay. Then. Stay in touch with Mr. Fitzgerald. No problem. That's really important. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. The chair will entertain. We're not quite done yet, but you can hear it. The chair will entertain a motion to find respondent in noncompliance and order a progress report at the September 12th meeting. Yes, so moved. Mr. Harrington, second. Second. Ms. Hans, all in favor say aye. Aye. By sign of vote. All right, now our case 49. Okay, now you're done. That was 42, and then I have 49 here. <coughs> Forty-six. We have uh, Michael Cooper. Right. Okay, come on out. Sorry. Sorry, it wasn't on my list. He's working on. Case number forty-six, CEB 07-19-136. Michael Cooper. State your name and address, please. Michael Cooper, uh, fourteen thirty-six Peachtree Road. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, we're here before you for a determination of compliance and noncompliance. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that uh, the respondent is working on it. Uh, they, they, they're trying to get things taken care of. So he's asking for a finding of non-compliance and compliance by next cutoff. Um, I've been sick since I've been sick for the last three, four months, and I haven't been able to do anything. So my kids have been coming in and 
doing whatever they can do to help me out. So I'm having the house painted right now. Uh, and I'm uh, Tower Hill, the roofing company, uh, they came out and uh, inspected yesterday and they won't have their report back in and I got three weeks to a month before they'll get their report back to me. So for the soft getting the soffit fixed. You're talking about the soffit here, right? Yes. Does he need a permit for that? Um, he'd have, they'd have to talk to permission licensing. Have to talk, you gotta go to well, the insurance company would do that. Uh, Michael Fitzgerald, City of Daytona Beach Code Enforcement. My credentials are on file with the city. Uh, the, the contractor would contact permits and licensing and determine if they would need a permit. Yes. Okay. I'm showing proof that I'm having the house. Right. He believe you. He, he told me. All right, me. sir. Uh, we are just here to determine today whether we are in compliance or you're not in compliance. Um, and... So we'll determine that, and then we'll say you come back, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald thinks that maybe you can be in compliance by the next day, is that right? Or yes, I'm pretty. Okay. <coughs> um, so that, um, what we'll, so we're 731, that's not a whole lot of time to get off the roof and the permits. And yes, so can I get more time? I mean... We'll know how bad the roof is when you get the report back. Yeah, that won't be a month from now. Once the roof permit, what the roof is, the roof is bad. So then we're not talking compliance. We're really talking progress. Yeah. Okay. So we know when. Well, so you don't really know when compliance until you so see. The, okay. <laughs> but we, since it's only softened, it should be more than 60 days, should it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're okay with moving it into the um, September. The uh, September cutoff. Okay. Madam Chair. All right. So that gives you a little extra time because the next cutoff date is you know, a couple of weeks away. So. Uh, and of course, if the report comes back needing a whole lot more, then we can okay. talk about it. Okay. 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 That's fine. Thank so, you. Where we are right now is. You're not done yet. Carolina <laughs> came motion to find the respondent non compliance and respond to measure compliance by. 9-4-2019 or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Such a motion. I'll move. Mrs. McClain, motion. Second, Mrs. Times. All in favor say aye. 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 Sign of post. Motion carries. Okay. So we'll see you back here on 9-4 when it's all done by this. All right. That's right. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shirley Amore, 1141 Clearwater Road, Daytona Beach, Florida. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Absolutely, yes. Thanks. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that this property remains in non-compliance, but the respondent is working on it, and uh, he believes that they could be in compliance by next cutoff. And I tend to Mr. Fitzgerald. Do you have any questions for Mr. Fitzgerald? Okay. Uh, what would you like to tell us? Uh, well, I have two of the uh, repairs that needed to be done fixed. And on the way to the other, weather, weather permitting. Um, and, yeah, I should, I should be done. I told them that I would call them as soon as I'm done, so I don't have to waste any more time here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's it. Well, Good. Any questions? Okay. Caroline K. Motion to find the respondent non compliance or respondent commission compliance by 731-2019. We'll be returning to board for consideration of the fine of $100,000 today. Such a motion? It's for September. Aye. 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 That's what you want, right? So, same Thank you. Maybe you want to have to back. Thank you. Case 53. 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 Case 53
Uh, Mazar. State your name and address, please. Uh, Mazar Zaza. In compliance. Uh, 416 Zelda Boulevard. For Fatuna Beach, Florida. Zaza is my last name. So it's a mix of a Japanese, Italian, Turkish, Russian, everything in all. <laughs> Zaza is the last name, yes. Raise your right hand, please. Sure. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah. Who's in the right hand? Sorry? She said oh, the right hand? Was it his okay. <laughs> Here's the right hand. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Jackson. Having been double sworn. <laughs> Uh, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the respondent, the, the, the uh, roof matter is, is resolved uh, as far as the permitting issue, um, and the respondent is working on everything. He believes he'll easily be in compliance by next cutoff, so we're asking for noncompliance next cutoff. That's good. Uh, I just, I just, I have, because they have been writing to the wrong address, we're not in the address like since a year and a half. And uh, we are, like any contact, if they want to contact us, I'm usually here in Daytona, but my wife is in Nashville, so all mailing goes to there. I'm on a medical issue between, uh, between Jacksonville, Gainesville, and Nashville. Okay. I have a medical issue where I travel when I need to do whatever I need to do, uh, but they have to notify her so she can notify me. To of that of that issue, so it's uh, for the record. The address is 726 Princess Court, Princess Court, and that's Morphisboro, Nashville, Tennessee. I used to live in Nashville. Yeah, so it's like you know, yeah, they have to contact us there because okay. we receive zip, we receive zip, this letter on. Which is it? So uh, zip code. Uh, um, uh, 39126, okay. if it. I remember good, you know, um, so. so you, but you can get in touch with him. Yeah, I'm, I'm in contact with him all the time, but the letter came on the wrong address, and then. Okay, that's okay. We'll and then. To fix it. That'll all be fixed. Let mm, me ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, you don't live there. Does anyone live there? No, I live there. Oh, you I'm myself. There come most of my winter there because Nashville okay. is not good for my health condition. Okay. So I'm there. Okay. Mm. You know, if, if I'm not here, I'm with my kids. If not, I'm okay. not there for the reason of watching me after the surgery, I go back to All right. Daytona. Fine. All right. so, but we know where to send. Yeah, yeah, yes. And you stay in touch with Mr. Fitzgerald. And the phone number is there. Texting will okay. take anything. Okay. okay. So thank you. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thank you. All right. So what's the next yeah. cutoff? So you just mm. say you get the work done and get Mm. In touch with Mr. Fitzgerald. Okay, okay. Three Great, okay. thank you. Case number 54, CEB Ginger Moore Faulkner, 344 Hartford Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32118. And are you also going to testify? Uh, possibly, sir. And your name is? Marshall Faulkner, same address. Raise your right hands. <coughs> you saw me swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. 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 Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is 
Um, John Stinson, Mrs. Stinson reports that this property is in non-compliance for RV parking uh, in, in front of the house. Uh, he had an initial inspection in, in um, May, on May 16th. A reinspection on the 19th. There was some, so uh, there was a uh, parking then on the 4th of uh, June. There was parking on the 24th of June. There was parking on the 25th of June. There was parking. Um, he's asking for a finding of it's currently in compliance uh, to the best of his knowledge. He's asking for a finding of non compliance and uh, compliance. Nice. We'll find, yes. And any future violations, they'd be subject to a fine of up to $5,000 per occurrence. Can I speak on this? Um, we are bewildered. Um, we don't, just don't even know what to say at this point. On May 16th, the vehicle was moved at 6.36 p.m. We keep a log book of our comings and goings with the RV because we have one neighbor down the street that's very difficult. On June 19th, it, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't even in the county. On June 24th, again, we were there, again, short term, going in and out of you know, trips. We moved it again, coincidence, at 6.26 p.m. And on the 25th, there was no RV. We have a place that we pay for every single month that, oh, I don't know where the other piece of paper is, um, that we store it at. And it, come, it goes back to it every single time. And again, we've got a log book because of our one neighbor that we don't. The only time the RV's ever there is, is when, when we we're coming and go. going. This, this is, is our long log. enough for us to clean it and everything, and then it goes back to its parking. We started this in November of last year um, because we started having, you know, people coming by and saying, you know, we couldn't park there or whatever. And so we, we started keeping a log of every time that we come and go. All right, I'm going to need clarification of the rules here because what you're saying is that you move this car every time they have, or... It's an RV. The RV. Yes. You move the RV. It was only there for how long? Um, the less than 24 hours each time. Hours. Never has it been. We always move it. We're always that I on the 24th to speed up the process to get it moved. My husband had gone to work. I was going to power wash the awning. Okay. This broke off of it, okay. and I could not get the awning bigger than I am, he's stronger than I am, but as soon as he got home from work, he did something, made the awning go back up, and I don't, you can't really tell by that picture, it's still, you know, high enough for somebody to walk under at that time, but, you know, we didn't intentionally do that, and this, I mean, this is what came off, it, it was nothing that we can do. I mean, we're not the kind of people that, that do something like that. I mean, we, you know, <laughs> Uh, we get the uh, ordinance on the street. Can we see what the ordinance says on this? How long you have to park here if you're not going to park here? Yeah. Ever allowed to park here? That's the question. Someone is allowing you to come in just for cleaning. Okay, yeah, my, my, my inspector's telling me it's loading and unloading. I'd have to uh, go get my book. I was told that when uh, uh, Mr. Gross left, he left with my book. And I said, oh, I'm, I'll probably be okay with that, but of course I'm not. So if, if one of the um, passing and come back to it, we can do that if you like. I, I uh, it's not clear to me how long it can be there. I know that we have rules about it. I, I, I appreciate that you, you move it. I mean, how often do you come back and forth with this? Got a copy of it? Um, <laughs> well, I can. Okay. I mean, this date, 16, 19, 24, 25. On, on those particular days? Uh, on is this an everyday occurrence? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, let's see. For the month of June, we traveled, one, we traveled twice, okay. I think. So, there so, are days in June? Uh, well, not full days, no. But, not yeah, days. but yes, coming and coming and going. Okay. And just to let you know that we do take this seriously, 
um, we have actually listed our RV for sale because we're kind of done. Our neighbor is just, we're, we're just kind of done. And I also sold one of my cars. I went the very next day after getting this and sold one of my cars. So there's not going to be any issues of having too many. Yeah, yeah. The, um, well, Yeah, actually, when it was cited on the CB1, they do, do quote the, uh, the statute. So I do have a, the, the statute portion quoted that, that we're relying on, which is Article 6, Section 2.H.7.A. And uh, I'll, I'll provide that to you, but basically it's, well, I can read it if you want me to read it, yes. Uh, there shall be no off-street parking in the front yards or street side yards of any lot in the residential district except as, as customary in the driveways of single-family detached dwellings and duplexes, recreational vehicles, boats, boat trailers, and utility trailers may be parked temporarily on, on driveways for a period not exceeding 24 hours for purposes of making and unloading and minor maintenance. At all other times, they shall be parked in the interior side yard behind the front wall of the dwelling or in the rear yard. All right, so they do have 24 hours. Now what is the... Not sitting out the way that... But not out front. Right. In the driveway. But it... Well, they actually can pull one up. I don't think they have a way to. All right, I know what you get. In, in the dr but I can provide it so you can. We, won't, we all need to understand this. They can't park out front like that, but if they have Anyone their. Who, I'm sorry, go on. At, at any time. Right. According to what I'm reading there, I don't know how we've been interpreting it. That's I'd have to ask staff, but the, but but the express language is in the. 24 hours parking in their driveway. Right. That's, that's the express language of the code, yes, ma'am. So all these people that come bike week to visit people that park in the front, they're all illegal? The answer is that that's, that's correct. That's what I was just heard that. from staff. Are you saying it's not there now? And it's not there now. No. 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 So the, yeah. For our knowledge, it's not there now. We, uh, the last okay. view would have been to say it's in compliance. Okay. No. no. So they were in violation, but not now. Yeah. Okay. So they were in violation. So that, that, isn't that what we're going to rule on? They're in, in yeah, compliance okay. and non compliance. So, yes. so can we um, move? So the chair, let, let's see if this works. The chair will entertain a motion to find the respondent previously in non compliance but currently in compliance, and for any future violation, we return to a subsequent meeting for a fine of up to $5,000 per occurrence in case being dismissed. That's the determination that they were in non-compliance at one time. Right, at one time you were in non-compliance. You, no, you are not today in non-compliance. We found you in compliance. <coughs> If you park out in front again, mm -hmm. and you come before us, we can automatically find you Jeez. up to $5,000 per occurrence. If you park it in the driveway, this is my understanding, I just want to make this real clear, if it's in the driveway for less than 24 hours or whatever. I don't know if there's a time period there, or I think it's yeah, just loading, or did it say? I thought it said 24 hours. Not to see. Not to exceed. Okay. Right. All right. Right. But it's purpose. It's really more purpose driven. If I may, Madam Chair, at least that's our perspective. Purpose driven that it's there because they're lo unloading or doing maintenance or that, something that's to that effect. So if you're loading, unloading, washing, doing whatever, that's okay. And then you move it. That's okay. So up to 24 okay. hours in the driveway for purpose of unloading or whatever. Or, side, or as Ms. Fine says, in the side, side of the house, here. you're allowed to have it there. Okay. You know, Okay, thank right. you, thank you. All right, so we have the chair will entertain that motion. Is there such a motion? Motion for Mrs. Hines. Is there a second? Second. Is there a motion to entertain the motion? Second. 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 Second.
<laughs> Second, Mr. McClay, all in favor say aye. Like sign and call. Let's have a roll call on that. Okay. <coughs> all right. Ms. McClain? Um, the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Is to find them in compliance, non compliance for, but now in compliance. And any future violation will be brought back to the code board and cited brought back, and they could face a fine then of, for each occurrence of up to $5,000 per occurrence. How would we determine up to? <laughs> I mean, I said yes, but five thousand dollars—that's just exorbitant. Well, that's what the law yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> that's it's just not the a cap. cap. Oh. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. We don't have to that. It's not a fixed amount. It's it's based on the same criteria that every other uh, uh, violation is based upon. It'll be the, the so. Can we put it in there that if the neighbor calls by the time they get over there, the RV is gone, those people get the fine? <laughs> we would love that. Okay, we're doing a roll call. Ms. McLean? Yes. Mr. Harrington? Yes. Ms. Himes? Yes. And Ms. Hundick? Yes. 4 0. There was a motion Yes. Okay. Good luck with Thank that, you. really. Thank you. Thank you. Are you familiar with the statute? Yes. We, yes, we have. Yes. Can we give you a copy? They can. They can have that. Here. Let me get the turn. You have this. So you know exactly. To get a special, you have to get. I just wanted you here, because I thought you were here, and then I realized. Thank you. All right. Now we'll go back to. We uh, <coughs> we see. There's one more person. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you sign up? No, he just came. It's what number? Case 48. 48. Come on up. Go back to case 48, which is CB0719-141. Are you Mr. Owens? No, ma'am. Carlos Sneed. Carlos Sneed? Yes. Raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, more truth than nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. And how are you related to Robert and Susan Allen? They're my dad's aunts, so I guess they'd be my grand aunts or something. They're what? My father's uncle and auntie. That's great aunt. Yeah, my great aunt. And you have permission to speak for them? Yes, ma'am. Do they live there? Yeah, a long time ago. They don't live there now? Nah. Does anybody live there? My brother was living there. Those was, that was his cars. Okay. All right. Let's, we'll hear from Mr. Jack, and then I'll give you a chance to tell us what's going on. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is the, for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that he's heard nothing from the respondent. He, he, uh, this is first for him with uh, this respondent that's present. Uh, so, uh, but he believes it can be taken care of by next cutoff. So he's asking for a finding of non-compliance next cutoff. Attended, Mr. Fitzgerald. Questions for Mr. Fitzgerald? Yes. Mr. Fitzgerald, you have the floor. Has any of this work been done? No, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, so no findings, Mark. Where do uh, your aunt and uncle live? I did. Um, who, who does the house belong to now if they're deceased? Uh, from my knowing, uh, my mother. My mom's been paying the taxes on the house since I was born. That's all I know about that part of it. Do you know if she has title? Well, you got to ask her. I don't know. She just They just sent me up here to, to tell y'all that we can fix this by next time we come in. Okay. It's all going to be fixed by next time? All we got to do is tear down that. And the car's already gone, and painting the house ain't gonna take that long. So the owners are deceased. Correct. Was there a will? Did they give the property to somebody? You probably got to talk to my, my father or you. I'm just here to. They would go and test it. Just to do that. 
mom and dad have any brothers who always have any children? No. I, I, I believe you do, Miss uh, Mr. Sino, because we only really need one uh, party of interest, and uh, at least for if for no other reason. If, yeah, he's he would be an heir. Uh, he's here on behalf of his mother, who would be a direct heir, and probably direct in line of direct in the lineage of uh, whether it was, uh, you know, unless we had any other information. Well, I think we could rely on it. So possibly to probate the case. He does, or he needs? He would need a demo permit. Okay, so um, can this become an issue? Yes, it may become an issue when he seeks to get a permit. And uh, But at this point, you know, for demolition, I'm being told by the inspector he's going to need a demo permit. So if, if they have to resolve it, then that will be something we'll take into consideration and we'll probably have to come back. Okay, but but if they're doing it the way that they're doing well, we're it. We're looking to get a demolition permit, basically. Well, he's, he's the the most immediate remedy is is uh, demolishing that portion, and if that's what they want to do, that's what the inspectors informed me that would be the the immediate remedy. Uh, but the issue would be getting the demo permit, how much time it takes, whether or not they're the adequate party to obtain it. Those things arise when they go to permits and licensing. All right. So what we're going to do is just find this. Of Robert and Susie Owens is that right? That's that's sufficient. I mean, we were saying next cutoff, but um, it could happen by next cutoff. It just depends on what he's doing and and how it's reviewed by the uh, by staff. Uh, if the preference of the board is to uh, 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 continue for a determination compliance state after find, making such a finding of a non-compliance, then that's okay yeah, with the I, staff I as well. I'm concerned with the fact that these people aren't here. Yeah, but we're not violating their rights because as he advised that they are, they are uh, deceased. And, exactly and the owner's not the... And we're relying in good faith on his sworn testimony that his mother is the, uh, that it is his, his mother, is the daughter of, of two deceased uh, landowners, which would be enough to give him enough interest to be able to at least consider his, his plan. I mean, we're not authorizing his plan because we don't have that power, but we can consider his plan, and, and he'll go get that authorization by getting permits. And if there's something that would block him from getting a permit, okay. they'll have to take those, those activities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they would need to... If they go ahead and make some contact, which has been the issue, make some contact with Mr. Fitzgerald, Mr. Fitzgerald, give them the, the, the route they need to take to get the things done that they need to get done. If, if we don't hear from them, then obviously we're going to end up in a, in a bad place. What's your phone number here? Okay, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to respond respondent non-compliance in order to respond to compliance by the next cutoff date, July 31, 2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. I'll give you a motion, Mrs. Hines, is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. McClain. All in favor say aye. Keep in touch with me and I'll help you all through that. All right. Okay, so Good. you stay in touch with him. All right. See what you need to do to get this done. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, well, there's one on this page. Okay, let's, we want to just stick on this page. Case 47, uh, CEB 07 19 Anything new? No contact, no. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports he's had no contact. Uh, nothing's been done. He's asking for finding of non-compliance and for the property to be brought into compliance by next cutoff. Do we have an okay. Tend to Mr. Fitzgerald if you have any questions. Any questions for Mr. Fitzgerald? So moved. Oh, no, case 24. 
Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Barbara Collins. Ms. Collins reports that she's had some contact with the respondent. He's out of state as of right now. Uh, and, but um, she said that um, based on the communication, she believes she can have it in compliance by next cutoff. So we're asking for um, uh, finding a non-compliance next <coughs> cutoff. It was uh, it was a confidential record. You want to elaborate on that? They're confidential records. So, some records are exempt under public records law based on uh, occupations or other circumstances. Yeah, and, yeah it's probably and, a police officer or something. What is it, a safe house or something? It, it's nothing. I mean, the reason it's confidential is because we're not going to talk about it in the public meeting. Oh, okay. As a matter of law. Right. Oh, law. Law. The chair will have to motion by the respondent not to apply to the next cut off date. 731 Second. Uh, motion. Uh, second. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector, Stanley Garcia. Mr. Garcia reports that the property is currently in non-compliance uh, and it's a fire damage property. He's asking for next cut off of the property to be brought into compliance. Tend to Mr. Garcia if you have any factual questions. Uh, Garcia, Code Enforcement uh, Credentials on file. This property is actually being demolished as we speak um, by, I would say, by next, I mean, Monday, Tuesday, it should be completely done. Um, they're halfway there. I had a picture. There it is right there. That's what's left. I went out there this morning and they did a little more. So. All right. So, Chair, I'll entertain a motion to find respondent non compliance or respondent for compliance by the next cutoff date, since 2019, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. So moved. Second. Uh, motion is time set in. Uh, Mr. McClain, all in favor say aye. 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 Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Tom Kleeg. Mr. Kleeg reports that he's had no contact with the respondent. Um, They did fail a rental inspection back in uh, February, um, but since then he's had, he has any contact, it's not compliance. The next cut off. So moved. Motion, Mr. Harrington, second. And the time's all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign of close motion carries. Case number 30C, P0719-153. <coughs> Introduce her. Is this your first time yet? Yes. This is her Welcome. First time. Welcome to the city. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah this is her first case. Huh? She's been to some of the past meetings, but this is her first case before you. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, as you see here, the, um, the inspector in this case is Sarah Kirk. Uh, Ms. Kirk reports that the property uh, remains in noncompliance. Um, and she's asking, it is occupied property. She's asking for next cut off to be brought into compliance. I tend to Mr. Kirk. I mean, sorry, Mr. Kirk. Ms. Kirk. Uh, Ms. Kirk, um, <laughs> have there been any contact? Uh, Sarah Kirk, Code Enforcement, City of Daytona Beach. No, I have not, never had contact. This is not originally your case. Ah, uh, yes, it was. Oh, so uh, we well, haven't I was seen in you training when I, I got this oh, case, okay. so John Stenson and myself oh, okay. did it in the beginning. So. And Ms. Kirk has been with us for just four months, so it's about the time when cases will start coming up now. Okay. Yeah. Respondent non compliance and orders. Respondent put in compliance on next cutoff date 731 2019 and return to the board for consideration. Final for $1,000 today. Accept the motion. So moved. Second it. Uh, <coughs> Ms. Hines. Second was plain old favor. Say aye. Aye. Black sign opposed. Motion carried. Page 11, case 31. CD 071 9 Okay, I do have two different names, so just so we can get some clarification whether it's Sanger or Sangster. Is yours right or is hers right? That's correct. You probably, that one's right? Okay. Uh, the the uh, inspector confirmed that it is Sangster, so I'll, I just wanted to make sure I was, we had the right yeah. name. Uh, uh, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Sarah Kirk. <coughs> Uh, Ms. Kirk reports that this property, she's had no contact from the respondent. Uh, this property is, um, remains in non-compliance and she's asking for next cutoff of the property to be brought into compliance. Any questions? <coughs> nope. Okay. There's one. There's one right there. <coughs> okay, Chair will entertain a motion to find a non-compliance or responding to compliance on the next cutoff date to be returned to the board for consideration of fine. Up to a thousand dollars per day. Would be seven thirty-one twenty-nine. Allergies. Your motion. My medicine has one. So moved. Second. Mr. Harrington. Second. Mr. Harrington. Second. Mr. Harrington. Say aye. 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 Sign. Opposed. Okay. Thirty-two. CP zero seven one nine one two eight. Norman Bryant. Yes, I'm Madam Chair, right. members to the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. Any <coughs> changes? No. The um, inspector, Jerome McCoy, Mr. McCoy reports that the property initially had a tenant, whether it still has one or not, it's not sure, but it is non-compliance. Next cutoff, uh, Ms. Mr. Riley is deceased, but uh, probably his daughter, who had an earlier case that wasn't who wasn't present for probably has handled other properties that have come before you. But in any sense, it's been noticed uh, properly according to the law. Okay. Not compliance, next cut off. Okay. All right. Well, that's got all the names on Chair, I want to take motion to I think it's 37. Oh, God. 37 on page 12. 0719-95, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports he's had no contact from the respondent. Uh, he's requesting noncompliance the next cutoff. Questions? 
So I take motion by this father in law compliance and will respond to the committee compliance by the next call, case 731 2019, and return the first consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. So moved. So moved. Second. Oh, this was second. Aye. 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 No, okay. Next okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for compliance and our compliance to the inspectors, Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the respondent's working on it, been in contact with him. He believes they'll be in compliance by next cutoff. So moved. Next so moved. Mr. Harrington <coughs> and Mr. say aye. 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 Well, I sign and close motion here. Case number 41, CEB 0719-149. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is um, Michael Fitzgerald. He reports that the respondent is working on compliance. He believes he can be in compliance by next call. The property currently is in non-compliance. members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. He reports that the, the uh, property remains in our compliance. He's asking for next cut off the property to be brought into compliance. The uh, respondents are working on it. He's been in contact. Uh, Madam Chair, members to the board, this is before you for compliance or non-compliance. Inspector Mike Fitzgerald. Ms. Fitzgerald reports he's had contact with the respondent and uh, he's asking for next call for the property to be brought in compliance. Based, based on that communication. Uh, he, he's not really, okay. but, well, but that's their representation that they'll have it done. That's what Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald has indicated. Okay. Motion by the respondent non compliance or respond to the compliance by the next cut off date, 731 2019, and return to the board for consideration of the fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion to explain. Second, time zone, favor say aye. 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 Sign opposed. Motion here. Get to this one already. Yeah, we did this already. Last one. Okay, we have case number 52, and that was. Okay, I guess you're right. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports he's had contact with the respondents and he believes that it can be, or they believe they can have it in compliance by next cutoff. So we're requesting a finding of noncompliance and next cutoff to come into compliance. Any questions? Mr. Chair, I'll entertain motion by the respondents not compliance or is it into compliance by the next cutoff date and be returning the board for consideration of the fine up to $1,000 per day. 
Second. We're working on filling the two positions as well, so you're not uh, down to. Um, also, uh, if we can circle back to case 23, I think in the order you stated that it should be a, a maximum fine of 10000 It should actually, I believe, be a maximum fine of uh, 15000 on that one. I do not believe that one's owner-occupied. The person right. stays so in Maryland. Motion. Motion. That's the case number C only if it's home state. He's not getting a no, 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 not only if it's home state. If it was on occupied. Oh, okay. That's what the oh, okay. I'll move. Okay. Uh, I don't have a